Hills, Century City, everything so nice and pretty. All the people look the same. Don't they know they're so damn lame? There she goes, Creepy Sue, Spandex Man, Cowboy Moon. Everything's so nice and pretty And all the people, they look the same But don't they know, they're so damn lame Welcome back, Golden Globies. That's right, we're bringing you the boo this week. It's going to be a good week. I know what you're thinking. There's not a fucking Rip Jack Joel Coleman. There's no other names on this episode. You don't recognize the title of this episode, but this is a 90s released movie, and it's very important, and you should be listening. You should be learning this week. Well, if there is. They're not listening. That's the problem. We're telling people who should be listening <laughs> to listen. They're not listening. Hopefully, they listened to the first one minute when I told them they need to be listening. Look, I just got back from Black Friday shopping. You, it's Saturday, but I just got back from Black Friday shopping. And yeah, that I line was long. Tired. Yeah, you got the tent. You got the gear. You camped out. What yeah. store did you camp out at? Best Buy, of course. I got to get a bigger TV every year. Every year. What are you up to now? Thousand inch. Thousand inch. Now is that one From large the ground. screen? No. <laughs> or is it the multiple screens at that point? Well, you know I watch multiple screens. Right. I, I can I have to see what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your T V is one whole piece I've of glass. Never, have you ever like I've never camped out for anything. And I, I don't plan on ever camping out for anything. Yeah, no. I, Concert tickets, no. Black Friday sales, no. It's funny. Chick Fil A, hell no. Why are we still trying to make Black Friday a thing when I like? I guess back when it it's cyber. It's all about Cyber Monday, first of all. Oh boy, uh, today is Small Business Saturday. Yeah, I miss that. What do we do on Sunday? Fuck rest. Do nothing. Do nothing okay. Sunday. Praise your Lord and Savior. I don't I don't make time for that though. Uh but I remember when people used to have to go Oh, here's my old man yelling at the cloud. People used to actually have to go to the box stores and wait. There's nothing to do anymore on Black Friday. Why is it still called Black Friday at this point? Why is it called Black Friday period? Because when I was a kid, nobody everyone acts like that's a thing. Like we've always called it Black Friday. No, we didn't. The media made that term up like fucking 10, 15 years media ago. Media or marketers? Same thing. Yeah, they work hand in glove. So, no. Fuck Black Friday. See, I shop whenever I want to shop. Goddamn right. Because that's the American way. You should just be able to walk As in. As we'll learn in this movie we're doing today, it's all about the 1%. Yes. You should be able to walk into a store as an American and just say, you know what, today's Black Friday. I'm taking 45% of no, I don't this. I feel uncomfortable even saying it. I, should we say African American Friday? We should consider it. We should at least take a vote on it as yeah. a demo- democracy. I think we should. So you didn't buy anything yesterday is what you're telling I me. I was working yesterday. Some people have to work, Griff. Is that how'd it go? It was miserable. It's miserable? It's like every day working is Because miserable. you couldn't go out and shop. Yeah, all I was thinking about was wow, I I, I had to shop. I like I was I got some uh emails from the the Severin and the, the vinegar syndrome. And, like, I'm sorry. Even your sale prices are just too much for me. Too expensive. I, I get I get their boutique kind of, like, sites. Right. But, no, I'm not I'm not spending over 20 bucks for a DVD. It's a dying media, all right? It isn't. It's going to be the fucking thing that people have to turn to because if it weren't for, you know, Mike's Plex server and some of those, you know, movies we've downloaded here, these movies are going to be gone, and you know it. Yeah. They're going to be wiped from history, and unless you have it stored on a and hard drive, then you're, you're, you're going to come to us. Yeah, because we're like, because I mean, I, I mean, Griff and I, we're like the modern day shamans. We're like the storytellers, the lore, the oral lore. I mean, 
And we're not just cutting corners. We're always giving Never. you the full fucking story. And people might not appreciate that today, but hey, time's cyclical. We'll go back to the time when kids sat in front of a radio and listened to Golden Globus Theater. Right. Mommy, mommy, please turn Tim Murray back on. I want to hear him smack his lips and smother oh, a peach. your mom turned me on, all right. <laughs> and I'll eat your mom's peach, and you'll like it. Peach cobbler, more like peach gobbler. <laughs> Is that what you had for Thanksgiving, Murray? Oh, no, we had the old-fashioned pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird how... I don't It's just... We can have pumpkin pie whenever we want. But why do we? We can, but we can only have it in the fall for some reason. Because it goes reason. on sale. No, we don't buy. <laughs> no, no. I will. All store bought pie is trash. Oh no, no. I just mean yeah. the ingredient for a pumpkin pie. Oh, I was gonna say I've never had a good store bought pie. Yeah. It's got to be homemade or nothing. So yeah. when my mom dies, I'm never eating a pie again. You know, I'm not gonna learn how to. A couple of those times make. I've gone to. Uh, oh shit, Easter Market. Yeah. Uh, they have the Amish folks that come in, and they make some delicious. Well, that's desserts. homemade, though. This is yeah. it's not processed, like Costco or something. Right, like that. right. Yeah. So homemade pumpkin pie, the full spread. It's the usual shit: turkey stuffing. No, you, you know, there just seems to be this argument: what do you call it, stuffing or dressing? Yeah. I was under the impression that stuffing was. What you stuff in a turkey's ass, sure. and dressing was on the side, sure. And that's the difference. So there, there's, there's no controversy. It depends I, on how you cook it, is what you're telling me. Yeah, whether you stuff it in an ass or not. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Now, are you still? Have you always been team turkey, or I don't care one way or the other. Right. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I probably the only time I ever have turkey is on Thanksgiving. Yeah, especially yeah. like a full bird. Yeah. I because. When I was growing up, I had this realization this year is that turkey Thanksgiving was always fucking awesome because I was like, I got a hunk of turkey. This is amazing. We never had anything outside of like pizza. Maybe <laughs> sometimes like, you know, the the culinary experience. Have you heard how Hungry Howie's is going to have mac and cheese pizza? Yeah. That sounds nauseating. Dude, it's, it's awful. There's yeah. been a couple of, you know, the, it is the mud show of wrestling. It's the mud show pizza. It's yeah. to put macaroni and cheese on a fucking piece yeah. of dough. I probably sprinkled bacon on it on top of it. Ma- well, if you're willing to pay an extra $4, they will. Oh. It's the fucking stupidest marketing ploy ever. That, this is what we do, though. But, yeah, turkey, I'm realizing, not that exciting. No. Not that exciting. And so I... I well, I, I guess if you eat pizza every day, it would be exciting. This exactly. Be change of so as a kid, it was like, holy shit, this is a world beater right here. There's potatoes that are mashed. There's uh, stuffing, dressing, whatever you want to call it. It was incredible. Uh. But now I'm just I'm bored with it. I, yeah. I, I spend three hours making tr- stuffing, dressing as I should call it, because I yeah. just baked it and made it separately yeah, out of a turkey's dressing. asshole. Right. And, you know, you get like two scoops of it, and then I have a whole fucking thing of stuffing, dressing, well, sitting in my fridge. Well, keep eating it. I'm going to keep eating it, oh, but yeah. it's just That's it's the whole point bread. of Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's to... It's to have leftovers. Leftovers. So you got a lot of leftovers. No. I mean, I, I think my mom made some turkey soup. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Turkey with noodles. Turkey noodle soup. Hell uh, yeah. Use the carcass, make a stock. Yeah. Goddamn right she did. Beautiful yeah. woman. Yep. Yep. So uh, taking a Beverly Hills. Best uh, transition ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I put this under the category a movie that doesn't have any right to be as fun as it was. It's, most people have n- probably never heard of this movie. I didn't hear it. I, I, I vaguely remember it from when it came. This movie tanked, by the way. Cost $19 million, made less than a million dollars at the box office. $19 million? Yeah. Well, they they did blow a lot yeah, of shit they blew, up. they blew up a shitload of houses. I mean, cool on the special effects. What they didn't do is even it out like... Uh, Shit, what's Chuck's movie? Uh, Invasion USA. Yeah. Because that had the perfect balance of character and explosion. Well, there was a lot of studio uh, interference. This movie was filmed in 1989, came out in 1991. Uh, the director, Sidney J. Fury, who we're no stranger to, he directed Superman 4. Perfect movie. And Iron Eagle. Perfect movie. And... Uh, 
he uh, the studio took it away. He was more of a set. I mean, there's a lot of satire in this movie about you know the the, the ha- between the haves and the have nots. Yeah. And they wanted they just wanted they just wanted Die Hard, Die Hard, and Beverly Hills. I was gonna ask you because you said <laughs> last week you made the bold claim every movie that came out an action movie that came out after Die Hard mm-hmm. was Die Hard in X yeah. on X. So this is Die Hard in Beverly Hills. So they just shut down the sit. The premise of this movie, Beverly Hills, is shut down, and Boomer is left there, Home Alone style, and has to fight his way out. Yeah, he just wants to get out. That's it. Yeah. So. uh yeah, this kind of I what I liked about this movie. It had a very uh, Marlboro Man and the the Harley Davidson guy. Yeah, feel in that the the heroes were idi- bumbling idiots. And I liked that. Like Boomer, he just knows how to play football. That's yeah. it. And he uses his football skills throughout this movie by just throwing things at people. It, he he literally throws a ninja star. Like a fucking football, but it had a tight spiral on it. <laughs> Our golf needs to be taking lessons. Yeah, Jared, looking at you, buddy. Yeah, I know you listen. Yeah, we're. We thought we were going to come into this episode crowing about because. Finally, the rest of the world gets to see our team finally's got it together. We're going to kick ass for once on fucking Thanksgiving. No. The Packers came to town. The Packers are a trash team. Jordan Love's been a terrible quarterback this year. He looked like the second By coming. By the way, sorry, Abra, for yeah, this. Yeah, sorry, Abra. But, but this is a football movie. It must be said. This yeah. is a football movie. Yeah. But he looked like the second coming of some kind of little cum baby between Aaron Rodgers and uh, Brett Favre. He was incredible. Well, he wasn't that great, but he still no. did enough to fucking beat the shit out of the Lions. Yeah. It was a miserable day, and uh, I'm glad you were able to survive it. Because here we yeah. are talking today about a great movie that lifted our spirits. I like to believe. Yeah, I hope people who aren't listening are listening to this. Because I know. You, I would. I highly recommend you check. I'm sure it's got to be. It's on YouTube, right? No, it's on YouTube. Make sure to find the HD version. And yes. There is some weird edits to this movie, but Murray has assured me it is not some kind of PG cut. It's just this movie was put together very strangely. Yeah, because they wanted more action. The studio wanted more action. Right. So they took it away from Fury. He was furious about it. I would imagine. And, uh, yeah, so this is like uh, this is this is what we do, people. It can't all be cliffhanger. We need to we need to find these gems, these diamonds in the rough that right. you're not aware of. And we also need to get on our soapbox about one of our favorites. You see, I was spelunking around on the interwebs to see what people might have nice know, cliffhanger reference. Thank you. There. To see what people might have thought about this movie. And I came across people who did have some things to say. And they're like, oh, yeah. Did we mention there was a uh, PC game of taking a Beverly Hills? Yeah, uh, a DOS version game. I yeah. did. Started up, Murray, and I (laughs) wanted to do a whole bit about how I played this game and how fun it is and all that. (laughs) You get control of your character. The first scene. I hear you can play Boomer or uh, Laura. Yeah. I believe it started me as Laura. And so you're driving along this road where you're watching that scene where the, uh, uh, the truck falls over and explodes. Yeah. And then you take control of a character. You're in the city streets of Beverly Hills. I tried to. Rodeo Drive. I try to walk into a building. Ever build- been to Beverly Hills? No. I have been. I think I haven't. I was on Rodeo Drive because we was, when I the one time I was in LA, we we did the uh, like the lame ass tour, mm-hmm. you know, where they take you to the celebrities' houses and all that shit. So they stopped you in Beverly Hills and you got to see where all the beautiful people shop and you know, you're not let in, you gotta be buzzed in. Oh, well, maybe we I should- got to look at the mirror in the window. Oh. But <laughs> it reminds me of that tour we took because the guy doing it was so like over, so like on automatic. He was just like, "In the next house is George Clooney." You know, he goes, "In the next house, the star of ER." Anybody know? Anybody? Of course, it is George Clooney. <laughs> I, and, I, I, and he's just making shit up because there was like a house. He's like, "This was in the film in Lord of the Rings." It was like some. It was like a weird looking house. It's like, yes, I'm sure Peter Jackson came to fucking L. A. Oh, just to film in this fucking house. That's so good. Oh yeah. my god. He was phoning it in. Like I, I, I love this because the climactic conclusion of my video game traverse into the world of taking up Beverly Hills. Mm. I walked into the building as Laura, and it just says, "Boomer got killed," and then. In the game overworld. I was like, what the fuck? Five seconds. 
That's all it took for me to game over in that game. Yeah, it's it it, it, it sounds, reminds me of Raiders of the Lost Ark Atari game, which yeah. I still have not figured out. So people, you can find this. Just Google it. Have a good time. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get you to put put that word out there on Twitter. A nice little link to it because there's like you can play it in a browser. You don't even have to download <laughs> shit because DOS is that simple of a machine. You know, our calculators that you can load up in Google are more complex. Speaking of calculators, we'll get into that later in the. Oh game. my God, I love tech. We got some Dungeon Master references going on. Man, there. You, you see, this movie's got it all because I love 90s tech. Yeah. And we get <laughs> 90s fucking tech in this. It's so incredible. Oh my God, I can't wait. But Tactically really, 89. Tech, and tactically 89. It did come out in true. 91. But, Murray. Yeah. We want to, you know, I was saying that I was spelunking the interwebs. We were finding things out. I was seeing people were like, oh, Ken Wall. Has Ken Wall been in anything? Yeah, he was in The Soldier, which we covered three years ago. Oh, shit, that's right. Okay. Ken Wall, no, I like Ken Wall. You, you are right. He is like a B-level guy. He was in a show called Wise Guy on the in the 80s, which is a very good show. Okay. I, uh, it was one of the first, he was like a cop going undercover in the mob. Right. And it was one of the, I don't think it was the first, it was one of the first shows that had like continuing story because everything's yeah. one and done back in the 80s right right so that was a good show it had kevin spacey's first show oh that he uh he played a character who fucked his sister wow he was a weirdo yeah, he's always been like, a weirdo yeah, uh, yeah kind of like today yeah. um and then of course they mentioned uh robert davi yeah robert davi and it makes sense you see robert davi everywhere we see been him in like at least six movies we've done right and it right in the opening scene of this movie i was like oh my god i'm sympathizing with robert There's a davi. lot of familiar faces we get matt frewer cliff yeah. from the miami voice episode oh okay max hedrum to all you normies we know him as Cliff, the hitman from Miami Vice. That's uh, right. Elgato's. Uh, He's so good in that episode. In yeah. those two episodes. Definitely uh, better. Fucking lead singer of L.A. hardcore band Fear, Lee Ving. Really? He's Varney. He was Varney? Yeah. That guy yes. is a singer in a band. Yeah, Fear. Holy shit. I would have opened with a Fear song, but you got to go with Circle Jerks Beverly Hills. Yeah. Fits. And I'm sorry for the POD I dropped in there too. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was that was the remix. Yeah. Uh yeah, we so we got fucking Ferris Bueller's dad is the fucking chief of police. Oh, I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, That's, there's a lot of familiar faces. That used to be a movie we watched in high school. They would just make us watch Ferris Bueller go Why? It, Encourages delinquency. I don't fucking know. We had some bad teachers there and some good teachers there. But, of course, Murray, the elephant in the room, the name that was not mentioned in any of those interweb circles, the name that's very close that to our That wasn't even heart. mentioned in the the uh, audio commentary for the DVD. I turned it off when they called him Guy with Mullet and Tank. Guy like, with uh, Mullet and Tank. Yeah. Talk about a terrible way to describe one of our favorite actors, characters of all time, Branscombe Richmond, everybody. Yeah. Give it up for the brands. He is one of the fucking greatest, and it's very hard to find a movie where he is in it start to finish. Right, and we, we t t by the way, we'll get into it at the end. I did not like his, his exit from this movie. Oh, God, no. But uh, we noticed that very wardrobe-wise, Bobby Six Killer-esque. Yeah, this is two years, which technically. Which makes us believe that Branscombe is Bobby Six Killer. Yes. He's just playing himself. Yes. Because he's got the fucking cowboy boots, the Beautiful. loud fucking like suits. Beautiful outfit. He I mean leather gloves. He's dressed to kill and Literally. he's fit to kill. Like he's got all the weapons, but he's also dressed. He could walk into a club at any moment, piss piss a fist pump around and have 19 of whatever he wants yeah, on he him. He didn't have the Native American jewelry we know no. for, but why? Because he's playing a character named Benitez, a Hispanic man. Right. Because we've, we've pointed out, Brand School Richmond is a citizen of the world. He can play any race, any gender, right. anything. Incredible job in this movie. Yeah. Fantastic. One of the complaints I had earlier is I wanted more interaction between characters because... We barely get any, and we know from watching many episodes of Renegade, Bobby Six Killer's a fucking dreamboat. Make that guy talk. Get that guy. He's I tough, but he's sensitive. I couldn't believe how like uh, Bobby Six Killer he was, dress wise and attitude wise. But at the same time, 
he's a heel in this. I'm used to him being a babyface. It works so well. He's just well. You know what? You need to thank uh, Lorenzo Lamas for spotting that diamond in the rock and saying that guy needs lines. He does because he rarely. We, we the movies we've seen him is when he's just like a fucking hench. Yeah, doesn't really say much. Right. And I was worried when I first saw him. I was like, Is this gonna be it? Is this gonna be it? And we'll get there eventually. But guys, this is a brand's call movie. This is it. Yeah, this you is don't why we're many. doing it. Yeah. yeah. You don't get many of them. Well, so before we get it. in the movie, should we talk about the mullet in the room? Oh, my God, yeah. There's dueling mullets. There's a good guy mullet. There's a bad guy mullet. Which is interesting because <laughs> it's also yin and yang here because you would obviously love Branscombe's mullet. Yeah. It's off the ears. Exactly. And it's still awful and flowing in mullet. Well, he was born with a mullet. Yeah. I mean, he knows what to do. He knows the maintenance. Yeah. Thing is, Ken Wall, I found his mullet disturbing, by the way. It's it's awful. It's one of the worst mullets I've ever seen. And you know why I believe it is? Because I, I don't, Ken, Mull, Ken Wall is not a mullet man. No. I've never seen him in anything besides this movie with a mullet. I think it was a decision by the the director. He's like, yeah. you must have a mullet. You're a football player. This and was... they get, I, they might. It could have been extensions because it looked bad. Yeah, it, it looked rough. I feel like this was in the time of the Boz and his relevancy. Yeah, eighty nine. Yeah. So it, yeah. they probably thought we need to have you with an extreme haircut. Right. Um, you know, he didn't have zigzags or color no, or anything. Well, he's a quarterback. So. Yeah. yeah. He was trying to go with a sophisticated <laughs> mullet, and it made it just that much more frustrating yeah, to but, see him. Yeah, it was. Ugh, so it was I know we said there's dueling mullets, but really oh, it is <laughs> obvious who the winner is. But yeah. you knew who we were going to say, Branscombe. Right. Because it's Branscombe. Right. God, that's the first name, everybody, I by think the way. fucking Ken Wall needed to put a branch comb through that hair and fix <laughs> it because I, it was rough. I just can't wait. You know what the next... That's a, that's a guy who's inexperienced with the mullet. Like, Branscombe knows what to do. Yeah. He should have... I Maybe there's heat between them because if you think Branscombe, a generous person he is, he's like, look, brother, let me teach you about mullets. I think he's straight method like we are whenever we're <laughs> trying to you know, get ready for a role on this episode, even when it's only yeah. a one-minute dialogue. Yeah. We still go method for one, two, eight years at a time. Yeah, I'm, I'm still a, a cop, technically. <laughs> And I still make people eat watches. Why did we watch? Why did we stall Kinjete for four years yeah. so we could get into I was, the characters? I was deep undercover. Exactly. And now I'm out. So that's why we did it. <laughs> I'm glad we've abused ourselves for the last 20 minutes. I hope yeah. you're still eating leftover turkey, everybody, because that might make this more amusing, right? Yeah. Well, you know, there's one character, okay. one person i want to mention real quick that i would have liked in this movie and i think could have helped maybe more so playing varney okay. and sorry to the guy in fear leaving leaving but there's yeah. a man you want leaving to leave Ving. i want leave to ving uh yeah. i want i wanted do you know the name kurt fuller sounds familiar but i, I he don't... pays plays a little character named brell brell from no holds barred Oh. Dubber of Jack Hole. No, I couldn't. No. Too cartoonish? Yeah, he, he doesn't. He, he doesn't, to me, come off as bodyguard material. Okay. I mean, no, I. Sorry. I, okay. I, I, I just wanted to put that out there for us because he did coin the term Jack Hole, and it uh, seems like that would be appropriate because. I was surprised, and I don't know why. Because most punk guys are little. Lee Ving is short. I didn't think he was that short. Yeah. I've seen him live. I've seen Fear Live. And I don't remember being that short. Maybe hmm. he was wearing platform shoes on stage. Rock stars are just four to eight inches larger taller. Than life. Yeah, larger than life. Hey, man. Make room for the girls, man. That's circle jerks. That's. I know, I'm just having yeah. fun because that guy's short, too. Yeah, he's real short. <laughs> Rollins, I, I hate to break it to you, Rollins isn't that tall either. He's, he's no like, Chippendale he's, dancer. He's the same height as me. And I'm only 5'8", so. He's just, yeah, he's just a wide man. Yeah. Not even that big. No. I was intimidated. I would have fought him. <laughs> Why? I'm just saying I would if he mouthed off to me. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have punked out like that kid in that YouTube clip. Yeah. Like, with, the, with the little rat tail. His cue. <laughs> yeah. If you go look that up, you can find that pretty easily. That's in Dearborn. Yeah. So that's right. Where down is the he now? Where is he now? 
oh, you know that kid's fat, he's got a beard, and he's at an AEW show right now cheering for his favorite blood-drinking wrestler, Hangman Adam Page. Well, you know who we're going to be? We're going to be on the other side of this trailer for the classic 90s movie, The Taking of Beverly Hills. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. <laughs> Beverly Hills, richest city in America, and home of Boomer Hayes, football's hottest quarterback. Do you have any champagne? It's in the refrigerator. But tonight, while Boomer is going for the score, Beverly Hills is hitting the skids. The truck's gone over. We got a spill. We got an emergency. You are hereby ordered to evacuate your homes immediately. Get Boomer! He's in the house! Look at him! Who in the hell is Boomer? The city of Beverly Hills is now quarantined and all access is closed. But this disaster is no accident. Take it. It's a smokescreen for the biggest heist in history. All right, dude. And every house, every shop, all of Beverly Hills would have been theirs for the taking. 700 million. Way past Jerry Lewis. Except for one tiny detail. Kill it. Now. I'm not playing defense! The one man they left behind is the only one who can stop them. Ken Wall. The taking of Beverly Hills. There goes the neighborhood. Beverly Hills, California. The perfect marriage of beauty and money, especially money. There's $10 billion tucked away in the banks here. Not bad for a population of only 33,000 people. This whole place reeks of luxury. It's all about living the good life. $20 million anywhere else can buy you a small country. Here, you'll get a nice two bedroom, no yard. More if you're prepared to pay for it. This place is an oasis in the middle of L.A.'s sprawl. It has its own city council, its own mayor and fire department, and of course, its very own police force. Beverly Hills has about a thousand lawyers and about as many gardeners. It's home sweet home to movie stars and rock stars, millionaires, billionaires, Arab oil magnets and Japanese tycoons, and a few crooks. Of course, if you're a Beverly Hills cop like me, you just can't afford to live here. Makes you think, doesn't it? Though you may not drive a great big Welcome back. No, that was not an extra long trailer. You actually heard the intro to this movie, and I mean, it did all the facts. And Murray, you didn't even have to do your homework for uh, Beverly Hills population at that time. Well, at that time, I mean, now it's 7.3 million. Oh, shit. 32,000 around or so. Of course, you did do the tour, so you know this for a fact. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. I, I can just pick it up and look and do the math in my head. Yeah, you saw like three streets and you were able to. Yeah. Put it down. Three streets. Triangulate. Guys, if only I, uh, you know, Murray's been telling me we should release my math journal because Murray goes around and he sees numbers everywhere and just writes them down. Uh, I have a beautiful mind, yes. It's like the Matrix. It's like looking at the Matrix scatter across yes. a notepad. But no, no, you guys didn't show up for Vincent Price Month. So we were mm. talking about making that a Christmas gift. No more. You don't mm. get to see Murray's beautiful mind. So, yeah, so our character Ed Kelvin, played by Matt Frewer, played by Max Hedrum, cop, and he's laying it out. While we're hearing this, we're seeing all the beautiful people, all the beautiful 1989 people, the big hair, the the power suits with the fucking shoulder pads. You see one homeless guy chilling, drinking champagne. That's how fucking... It's so rich that even the poor people are rich. Living in the streets. We see Lambos. We see Ferraris. We see Rolls Royces. That's right. We got Everything we want to living i go man i'm just aerobic gears for like little speed walking trips it's beautiful 
dog walkers that are fucking drenched in, uh, you know, I don't know what the popular fashion icon of the day was, but those are dog walkers wearing high fashion. Yeah, Gucci. Gucci was still popular back then? I don't fucking know. I don't and know. so, uh, by the way, music done by Jan Hammer, who did the theme for Miami Vice. Oh. And we get, so we get a, we get a classic one hit wonder EMF with you're unbelievable. So, all right, so we're setting the stage because this movie's called Taking in Beverly Hills. So, we need to know all we need, all we need to know about Beverly Hills was in that intro. Right. So, we're set, we're ready to go. Let's do this. Um, we didn't, we didn't highlight any of it though. Ten billion dollars in uh, BH banks. That's Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills you. banks. Okay. Thirty-two. 000. But there's only that's the thing. There's only thirty-two thousand people living there. That's a lot of money. Rich people. We did. I Murray didn't bring his math book with us. Otherwise, we'd tell you how many million per person. Can't do that right now. It's got its own police department, fire department, a thousand lawyers reside in Beverly Hills. Very that's, litigious. That's three point two percent of the population. I can do that math. You just there you, move, move. There, there you go. Move the, so for every three point two person, there's a lawyer. That's right. So yeah, it's it's Shangri La in the hell that is L.A. Right. We're working into a tool song now. All right. So we're at. What do rich people love to do? Well, they love their charity galas. Right. For the homeless. Yep. You got to make an excuse to have a big party. but A tax write-off. You Exactly. You got to have it as a tax write-off, and you have to make it not about you just getting drunk in public. It's got to be for a reason. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm donating And, and making something. yourself feel good about yourself. Right. I'm giving back to the little people, the people that we won't allow in Beverly Hills. Right. Tax write-off is the right thing to say here. Look at all people. This is where we meet Robert Masterson, played by Robert Davi. A self-made man, a millionaire, a billionaire. I don't fucking know. And, you know, some people aren't working with the cleanest deck, you know? Joe Coleman working with the great deck. And now he's filling out. He's almost 265. He hasn't quite hit the perfect weight yet. No. But he was... He, we all have shit. to have goals. I have to strike that from the record. He told us not to tell anybody that. Well... I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, but Robert Davi, he's starting at, like... The shit shine box or something here. He's working it's, his way. He's living the American dream. He's got. He's just got that craggy face. And, yeah. You know. He. But he took that and he said, "I'm gonna make something of myself." And in this movie, he's fucking doing incredible. He owns a fucking hotel in Beverly Hills. He owns the L.A. Cobras. Excuse me, from Kinjete. The number one arena football team in L.A., where all the beautiful people go to. I know for a fact. That uh, Jack Nicholson has season tickets to the uh, L.A. Cobras. You know, laser disc version of Kinjeta. You can see him in the front row. He's eating a big thing of homemade chili, <laughs> spilling it on the field. <laughs> you gotta eat chili at a Cobras game. That's their thing. Right. And then when the other team's winning, you throw the chili at their back. So Robert Masterson, he has it all. He's living the American dream, but the dream soon becomes a nightmare because he bumps into Mitchell something. I don't remember his last name was. Snobby, rich, blue blood guy born into money. He owns a fucking insurance company. And he also happens to be the father of the love of Robert Masterson's life, Laura Blah blah blah, whatever. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. That's the Fred Flintstone. He, he pretended to be rich. Remember that episode? <laughs> where he's like, "I'm Frederick J." Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> and he was. And everyone. Went, How do you remember so much Flintstones? <laughs> because I watched it all the time when I was a kid. Oh, okay. That shit sticks with you. It does. It does. Yeah. I remember more shit that happened in Rugrats than I do shit I'm supposed to remember. So he's talking. He's like, "Hey, how's the how's the party? Are you enjoying yourself, Mitchell?" No, <laughs> you. I, this party's pretty okay, but I got to tell you, there's a lot of stench of homeless people around. And he even does the rich man, like, weak, limp wrist flick to point uh, in a direction. I hate that. The other day, there's a charity event with the hottest band in the land, EMF. Have you heard of them? I saw them. They got that guy up They're there. They're unbelievable. Cool. Oh! And they looked right into the camera. I didn't like that. <laughs> well, I hate it because they got the right guy for for this character. Yeah. He looks like every rich white asshole ever. Right. So they did a good job casting here. So I'm like, oh, 
Robert Davi is my hero. I right. love this guy. I still don't know who I'm supposed to be rooting for or against in this movie. Because this is the ultimate get revenge on the 1%. Right. So, uh, so Masterson, it's like he even, you know he wasn't born. He's, he, he's being, he wasn't born Robert Masterson. Right. He was like fucking Robert Guccinelli or some shit. And Masterson is definitely a name you want to be very far away from these days, he's, too. He's trying, why is it? Danny Masterson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so he's trying to like buy his way into this higher level, right? And he he, he wants it's it's the only gauge he has for himself these days. His family's w- long gone, right. so it's like I got to climb the social ladder. I'm living in Beverly Hills, but I want to be the top. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He's right. just like, why won't you people accept me? Because right. he's a self made man, and they are blue bloods. They're born into this shit, and so he's trying to convince Daddy, blah blah blah. That he's not only <laughs> one of the greatest businessmen alive, he should take him on his board and may you know let him like wheel and deal. Well, with he's him. just like because he's like, hey, when's where's when's Laura showing up? Right, just, but uh, he wants to be on his board, but he also wants to board his daughter. Right, and waterboard, and <laughs> he's just like, hey, where's Laura? At? Oh, she. He's like, because he's like, apparently, we don't really know if they had a relationship. He wants a relationship with yeah. Laura. Yeah. But he's hot for her. He's hot for her. And uh, I think they did have a brief relationship because he's like, oh, they, my, my daughter's slumming with Because he's like, we're going to get married pretty soon. I'm, you're going to be calling me son. He's trying to, he, again, he's doing the fake it till you make it. You're going to be calling me son soon. When's Laura Can I call here? you dad? Yeah, let me go ahead and call you daddy because pretty soon we're going to be related. Because your daughter, I know she's telling you no, but her eyes are telling me yes. And that's when Daddy blah 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 hits him back. <laughs> My daughter slum. She was slumming with you. She wanted to see what an uncircumcised dick looks like. <laughs> and so Robert takes that to the face and just goes, <laughs> he did. "Well, I believe he did. at least I don't work in fucking insurance selling the ultimate scams. fucking protect." Their the implication is, and there, we've never seen proof of this. The implication is Masterson is a criminal. Yes, and he's just like. How about you? The ultimate protection racket called insurance. Right. You know, he throws it back in his face. You said it best. W- was there something left on the floor about Masterson's past? Was he in yeah. some kind of organization, a racket? Now he gets to see like a syndicate, the if you will, above board racket. And Daddy blah, 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 threatens to cancel his insurance policy on his uh, like. Fucking uh, hotel, I think. I think it was his hotel. He says, oh, God. Oh, that barbs me so hard. It would be such a shame if your hotel lost insurance. You wouldn't be able to keep it afloat. No one else will insure you in Beverly Hills. And then he just walks off. So Robert Pitts. takes a shot of shrimp cocktail because that's what rich people do. And he sucks on it like a toe. Oh, God. Well, it is shrimp. I mean, this is a shrimpers movie. Yeah, shrimp and Shrimp, easy. Shrimpers Paradise. Well, we'll get to the shrimper yeah. scene later. Yeah, I Barbara, thought, pay attention. I thought we were loading up the fucking Sveitsen machine for that no, scene. There's, there's no fucking in this. But movie. no, it just turned into a shrimp boat. Remember when the '90s rolled around? There was like no fucking in movies anymore. No one wanted to fuck Ken Wall with that mullet. I, I can't blame him. If he had a better haircut, handsome guy, but. Mullet just kills it. If he had a fucking better haircut, I think that actress would have been like, I'll show my ass in this. Oh, well, we'll never know. So he's, he's like, he just got shit on. We know shit rolls downhill. So he's like, I need someone to shit on. Right. Where's Boomer at? Of course, the star quarterback of the LA Cobras. That's right. And we're getting the Tic Tac. And I already explained this to Murray. I'm going to let a little bit of my frustration out here to you guys. I hate a movie that introduces 45 characters in the first five minutes, and that's what we're getting Even when here. they say the names, at least? Yes, it still gets frustrating because it's like, who do I need to pay attention to? Who keeps coming up? See, this is what happens when you got to write notes. You people don't realize how strenuous. You think it's just a cakewalk what we do. No. We make it sound like a cakewalk. This is work. Unpaid labor. Unpaid Labor. So he's like, where's my head of security? Vani! Vani! And this is where we see... <laughs> I got that one. Yeah. This is where we see the great leaving of, uh, of uh, fear. fear. Yeah. 
I don't care about you. Yeah. New York's all right, all right if you're a homosexual. You could say that in 1980. You could say a song called New York's all right if you're a homosexual. <laughs> so he walks up. He's got a, Everyone's got a chip on their shoulder. There's right. no, Nobody's ever good enough in Beverly Hills. There's a pecking order. Let's go ahead and let people know right now. Varney was ex-police. Yeah. Uh, we don't know why he's ex-police at this point. but Dirty he, cop. You know he was a dirty yeah. cop. Well, based on that salt and pepper hair, I'm going with dirty cop. And he's now in, like, private security, which is, right. of course, what all dirty cops get into. Yeah, right. Or go to ICE. Because you don't got to wear a fucking uh, body cam. Yeah. So he's like, Farney, find that boomer fuck. Did we, does Boomer have a last name? Has he ever referred to with a last name? It's not a Siasen. It's that. definitely not a Siasen. That's a good football reference. Aubrey, you might want to look that up. Boomer yeah. Siasen. So as he's going to look, he bumps into his old boss, Bumbling police chief, Ferris Bueller's dad, police chief. I don't think he had a fucking name. If he did, I didn't remember it. Right. And we can tell there's some heat because he's like, hey, Varney, you know what you doing now? He's like, I'm running private security. Yeah, they're doing like this whole thing about uh, how he doesn't have to protect rich people anymore or something. It's like, you're a security guard for a rich gala event. But what he gets to about? choose who he gets to he doesn't have to. If he, does, he doesn't have to eat shit if he doesn't want to. He can just tell a rich guy to fuck himself, and he'll just get another job. It is Beverly Hills. There's probably a rich soiree every day of the week. There's probably some fucking eyes wide shut party every fucking day. You need a lot of security for that, Epstein right? Epstein Island. You need somebody to handle consent forms for that. You as know, well. Varney has no trouble finding fucking teenager girls for fucking the Epstein parties. Jesus, why do you say that? Because that's what happens in Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. Just yeah. a lot of the police. Is that why he got fired? Was he was... Yeah. Out... Oh, did fucking... Corrupting minors. Did, did Lieutenant Crow find him out? Is that his name, Lieutenant Crow? Wasn't it Detective Crow or is it Lieutenant Crow? Oh, no, it was Lieutenant Crow. It was Lieutenant Crow. His he first pro... name is Lieutenant. He was a detective, <laughs> but his first name is Detective <laughs> Lieutenant Crow. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to see Leaving go up against Bronson, that, but that we'll never know. Good. That could have looked all right. Probably the same height. So there's a, we just see there's he we see that Varney every, he has a chip on his shoulder. All these guys are never good enough, right? And so as you said, shit's rolling downhill. Uh, Varney just got shit on twice, so now he's really got to give that shit to Kelvin, right? The band at the bottom of the toe, who totem it pole is. With the police still, yeah. and he's trying to, you know, calm a situation where some homeless people, who the charity event's for. He's having a little fun with the homeless people. Yes, he is. Because this is an the event. over there is uh, Michael Jackson. These people aren't just anybody. They're here with the party. This is Michael Jackson. This is... Uh, Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty. He said Warren Beatty. <laughs> okay. Because there's a... Because, you know, in Beverly Hills, they got those, like, high-end shops where you got to be buzzed in. And they're just... They're just Fucking uh, window shopping. Uh, they right. have no money, but they're still. They can look, can't they? No, they can't. The guy's like, get away from there, get away from there. Right. And then fucking Kelvin standing up for the little man. We should point out this whole party's happening on this streets Rodeo Drive, just yeah. right there in the middle. They're they got tents and canopies and band stage. Red carpet. Red carpet. The ultimate color of carpet. So Kelvin is being assigned to go. Figure out where Boom Find is. Find where Boomer is. Bring him here. We need Boom. Speaking of the Boom, here he is. A horrible mullet. But he's in the limo. There's a lot of limos there. It's Beverly Hills. Of course. Gets dropped off. Nothing but a sea of pussy. Women love the arena football. Oh, my God. He's getting hit in the face with undies after undies. And he's just like, ladies, ladies, I just conditioned this shit. Right. And these women, like that's... That's what they need the police for is to keep these women away from Boomer. Right. And Calvin's doing an okay job. He's fucking, you know, minding where his hands are ladies, touching. Ladies, get back, please. Making room and everything. That voice alone mostly <laughs> startles the women and they're like backing up. It just, just makes you get you chill up your back. You're right. Like, yeah, they're looking for they're looking down really far for wherever that voice is coming from cuz that's a little troll voice. And every, you know, everybody, who could forget how big the L.A. Cobras were in 1989? I mean, they were the toast of the town. Jesus Lakers Christ. who, after the Lakers got their ass whipped by the Pistons, they were on the trash heap. It was all about L.A. Cobras. Yeah, Magic Johnson couldn't even afford. He got AIDS to... because of that. <laughs> he got, he got his... AIDS just so he could get attention. 
<laughs> because got, so many people were talking about the I LA hear Cobras. He got it in the bathroom of an LA Cobras game. He intentionally got it because he wanted attention. I'm gonna say I'm gonna call right now. We know he loves to invest. Hey, do we really know he has age? He's still alive, by the way. <laughs> Have you been fucking conning us for thirty five years, Magic Johnson? Uh, or is your Johnson magic? Oh man, and this is our three minute bit on I Magic got, Johnson. <laughs> I got nothing but love for Magic Johnson. From Michigan. From Michigan. We love him. Yes. It's true. All right. So yeah, so Boomer is just like Cal uh, This is where we're supposed to believe that Boomer is salt of the earth because Calvin is just like Man, I've been told to come fetch you. Oh, man, you got that kind of bad duty? No, I can swat all these women off. Who told you to do that? I'm going to tell them. They're well, he gives them a pep Boomer. talk. He's like, Kelvin, you need to stand up for yourself. Right. Like, don't let Varney fucking tell you what to do. He's not even a cop. Right. Well, I don't want to get fired. I got, I got mouths to feed. He doesn't. And he's just like, look. I'll go talk to Varney. I'll get you a raise. Yeah, I don't know how Varney's going to get him a raise, but he's he, Boomer can do anything. Right. So then he comes. Boomer walks up to Varney. We can just see how jealous Var Varney wishes he could have a mullet like well, that. Well, Varney's cranked his <laughs> neck up to look up at this fucking star of a quarterback. You see, everybody, you got to understand something about arena football. Sometimes you get a Kyler Murray in uh, the NFL, a 5'10 quarterback, not a Chippendale dancer, tiny hands, runs like a tiny baby running away with a treat. No, not in arena football. Every quarterback, six foot eight or above. That's the only way you were allowed. That's why it's such an elite fucking sport. Exactly. Because you had everyone had to be above six. Exactly. So Josh Allen almost went to arena football, but it just doesn't have the same clout it has. Yeah. Used to have, yeah. that is. So, yeah. so this is an inside football <laughs> <laughs> episode. We said it from the beginning. Sorry, Opera. Sorry. So he goes to Varney, look. That Kelvin guy creeps me the fuck out. <laughs> Keep him away from me. I was on board with this movie at this point. I was like, I love Robert Davi as a as a good guy. I love that this boomer guy is like, yeah, I'll help you out. Get that fucking guy away. From me. I loved it so far. So, boom, finally goes to the owner's table. Because there is a table where the coach and the other players are at. But he gets to sit at the big boy table right, with the owner. Here's the sad truth of football. Quarterbacks, you live and die by them. Very few teams make it without a quarterback. And he's, like you said, he's still cocky. He's just he's taking it all in. Everyone's cheering him. There's a fucking standing ovation. Apparently, they had a football game today. Yeah, that day. And so he still, uh, he, um, um, Oh man, Boomer is still gloating over his victory because you gotta be you gotta be headstrong when you're a quarterback. You right. gotta be able to bounce off your defeats and everything. But he's when he's never when you tasted win, defeat. Yeah, when you win, you gotta also just let it shine and let people fucking stare up at you. So he's there sitting with the owner, telling him, "Yeah, we were pretty close. We had him on the ropes, but you know, if you get to give me the ball with two minutes left and a timeout, I'm gonna fucking win the game every time." And Robert. Does not like that. He's like, there's no I in team. Yeah. Gives him that speech. Yeah. It wasn't a you win. It was a team win. And then he's like, and then he's like, Boomer's like, why am I even here? Because you're contractually obligated to be here. And now I want you to smile for everybody. Smile. Be pretty. Flick your mullet. And uh, by the way, what, how's that leg doing? You know? <laughs> You could be on the track. You're you're talk of the town, toast of the town today. You're the garbage of the street tomorrow. Right, and you you see, there's a lot more. Oh, I'm so sorry, Abra. There's a lot more contract talk happening here because inside football, he's got a bum leg. Who's gonna take him up if he hits free agency? He's gonna have to pass a health check. So he's still like trying to run and go on and be like, oh no, it's so not that it's bad. So basically. Uh, he's doing to Boomer what. Um, Daddy blah, 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 did to yes, him where exactly. it's putting him in his place. Know your place. I Ble am your master. Beverly Hills with a shit. And he even does that. He's like, oh, right, master. He does. Like, he does. Like, you could do that in 1989. Yeah. And so, yeah, so there's just a lot of tension all around. And it's getting serious. We're seeing this asshole with a horrible mullet stare into Robert Davi, sympathetic character, just trying to run a football team, successful football team. Oh. It's not put the team before the eye. And then Laura blah, 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 comes in, 
and yeah. you might as well her play. Her gloves were pretty nice. You might as well play Dreamweaver because everybody stops and gawks at her. Especially Boomer. He's like, hmm, I haven't noticed that before. Right. But Robert, he's the one who's, like, throwing the flip around. Basically, he set up this soiree. Yeah, he's trying to buy his way into that next level, that next echelon. He right. wants to be at the Epstein parties. Right. So there's the empty seat at the table, and, of course, it's for Laura to sit next to Robert. Right. And that's when we're seeing, like, Robert or uh, Boomer trying to make eyes with Laura and everything, and Daddy blah, 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 cuts in <laughs> to announce this huge, enormous, generous... Donation, two hundred thousand dollars. Thanks, thanks to Mr. Robert Masterson, extraordinaire billionaire. I don't remember how much it was. It was a million. He wrote it right here. Okay. And how much was that back then, though? Cross, uh, cross the T, uh, dot the I. Uh, eight point seven three million. <laughs> eight point seven three. Okay. So everybody applauds him. Even though I think I think even then, Daddy blah, 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 threw some shade on him. He, was he did. Like, he did. I don't remember what he said. I burped. It was just like, ooh, just a million. Like, couldn't you do more or something yeah, like that? Yeah, exactly. And so now Robert's like, hey, Laura, pretty sweet what I did for those homeless people. By the way, we forgot to mention, I think Boomer planned this. He had a homeless guy sitting at the table with them. He did. And the guy was just drinking some champagne, smoking a cigar. He was clapping along with everything. Oh, my God. It was good. And uh, in the background at the player's table, the coach, they're making bets like, Boomer's going to fucking boom that pussy tonight. And coach is like, nah, he, she's too out of his league. So to set this up a little bit, Robert using his leverage. Oh, yeah, your daddy just announced how awesome I am. Look at this. There's a homeless man eating at the table with us. And Laura's like, yeah. That is. He actually knows how to use a fork and a knife. Yeah, we taught him that. Yeah. So he's feeling That's what the it. charity is actually for, is to teach uh, homeless people how to eat properly. <laughs> so he's all uh. happy. He's high on his own hog. And he's hoping Laura's going to hop his hog. But she is not into that hog. And she's like, you know what? I've been here for five minutes. I got better things to do. I'm going to take off. So she's already ready to go. I this was the first time this got a, this hit me that maybe Robert Masterson is not a good character because this Laura chick, rich chick, living off dad's money, says so. And so Boom sees that and he's like, "Oh shit, this is my moment." But you know, owner Massa's hands got to go out and stop him and pull him in. Robert Masterson, yeah. And he's like, "Boom." Did he say this? Yeah. You need money to climb that mountain. I mean, we just came off Cliffhang Mountain. Because you got to remember, this is 30, blah, 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 four years ago. So I don't think, maybe maybe quarterbacks are making a million a year. A million. I could tell you what his contract was. Okay. You this got, is, you this is on beats? Football uh, Focus. Okay. You can find it. I I didn't know he was a real quarterback for that. I was like Cobras. He was. He made two million in this year. That's a, for that. That's for, we, I just did the you math did earlier. The math. So that's, that would be ten million today. Ten point seven two yeah. five six pi. <laughs> and so, yeah. So he's like, hey, I gotta go. I gotta try. And this is where Robert hits that inhaler. We gotta point that out. It's very important. Robert yeah. Masterson. He's like. <laughs> It's a hidden inhaler because that's a very important plot point. There is one goof I had way later in the movie that I feel so embarrassed about. Okay. But anyways. So uh, Boomer chases Laura out. The fucking homeless guy, he, he's hanging out with the players. They're having a good time. Coach has to hand over the money because he knows he's going to be booming that pussy later. It's, it's so good. Well, they're yeah, they're playing, they're betting on this at the table. Everybody's throwing in because they're just like, homeless guys. Like I want in on that shit. Throws a crumpled up dollar on the fucking yeah. He's like that with shit on it. Hair like, like that. He's gonna uh, pull in some fucking hot puss. I, I don't know, but here's a dollar. So okay, we're going to this private conversation between Boomer. Yeah, she. They're and walking Laura. out. They're leaving the uh, festivities and. He's like trying to plead his case, and she's like, "Well, well, Robert's he knows the whole ploy, right? You right. treat a whore like a princess, and a princess like a whore. So he's treating her like shit, right? Because she's trying to talk up how great, because apparently she was involved in getting this soiree together, and so she's patting herself on the back, and he's like, 
You think this is fucking impressive? One million dollars for homeless people? No, these people don't need just money shoveled on them. What they need is hand touch community. They need, he says it himself, they need to touch excellence. Self-esteem. And he's like, you know what? I got a, I got an offer for you. You give me one night, what, 24 hours yeah. with you, and I will coach some underprivileged asshole kids. I don't know. For one year. Every Saturday. Every given Saturday. That's right. 52 weeks. But, of course, there's got to be a quid pro quo. Right. This she is where, goes right well, in. This is the first time Trump ever heard that phrase. Yeah, it is. She goes right in for the handshake, and he has to dart it back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Quid pro quo, quid pro quo. 24 hours. 24 hours. And they start tonight. Right. And, and she, not just tonight. You have to take my hand like you want to go away with me. And you have to peck me on the cheek, too. And she's just like, all right, two hours. And he's like, no, blah, 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 eight hours. And you got to kiss me. And you got to act like you're into me. Yeah. And she's like, okay, for the kids, I'll, t- I'll do the eight hours. So we get that smoosh. We cut back over to the coach's table. Yay! He got it! And Robert Davi's face is just getting gloomier and gloomier. He's like, how the fuck? Is it the hair? I got this tight hair. It's not on my ears. Is that what I need to do? Get it on my ears? Do I need a mullet? Do I need a mullet? Money doesn't buy everything, apparently. So, okay, now we see they're they're going off. They're going to a bar to get to know each other a little first. Right. Easy. We got the party cleaning up. She did call him a jack hole because she doesn't respect Jack. She's thinking, she just automatically assumes everything, looks at that mullet and goes, this guy's an idiot. Yeah. He doesn't know anything. Well, he cannot being, hang with me conversation-wise. He's bringing up great topics. What are your, uh, uh, oh, shit, I forget my dating days. There was the one thing we used to always joke about. <laughs> oh, what's your uh, love language? <laughs> what's your love language? I think that was it. Yeah, sarcasm. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, sarcasm. <laughs> Luckily, that yeah. was it. Um, it's just not It's just not hitting off. They're fucking, it's friction. She just says love language? <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? Oh, I, I get it. You just don't like football players. Oh, no. I like the athletic type. I'm just not seeing it today. Oh. She's like, I like athletes. I don't. I forget what it was. It was something. I like athletes, but... I, I don't like football players. I like athletes. Yeah. It, it was, obviously, that's a weird oxymoron there. But. So, they're getting to know each other. Meanwhile, this fucking chemical truck is just barreling down the streets. And we're like, what kind of madman would drive like that on the streets of Beverly Hills? We do get this beautiful shot. It's probably one of the best. Well lit. It should be in the sizzle reel. Underlit. Of- Branscombe Richmond forever because you just get kind of his profile, that mullet blowing in Flapping the breeze. The Sioux Falls are flowing. I wanted the turquoise earrings and necklace. A little tomahawk and earring. Oh, if that you was dangling that. in the breeze too. He's oh got he's got the driving gloves on. He's ready to go. He's just fucking driving like a madman. His fucking outfit for this movie is incredible. Especially I don't know if he keeps him on the whole movie, but those sleeveless gloves he's wearing there. <sighs> I think they were sleeved. I oh, think he had... no, they were sleeveless. Yeah. I saw oh, those fucking okay. toes. Saw, okay. Finger toes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so what makes as much sense as sleeveless club? <laughs> so, is there like, what? what's going on here? Is he, is Branscombe just playing a fucking semi driver? We'll learn later. There's more to it than that. Right. Somehow, despite this whole date not going that great, he gets, well, they had a deal, two hours. Right. So, after the first hour, well, a couple hours. drinks. Oh, he had eight hours tonight, though. He could have it. He can sp- splice sp- it up whatever any way he wanted. Right. Yeah. So he's like, "All right, you're going home with me now." And they get there, and what do they do? They just sit down in front of the fireplace. John DeHart happened to pop in and do this scene because he was only a few miles. Down and the road. what do they do? They laugh about what a simp uh, Robert is. That's right. They're like, "God, he's such a loser." Right. And they're bonding over that. They're getting to know each other. You know what? I want to point out. There's some great subtle acting by Ken Wall in that he got injured in the game and he is limping. We're seeing that. We hear, I mean, when we were talking about the contract negotiation earlier between him and Robert, they were talking about his leg and everything, a leg that he also injured again in that game. His ankle. His ankle. 
So they just kept referring to it as a leg. But, yes, right. specifically his ankle. Well, that's going on. Kelvin, our buddy Ed Kelvin, Max Hedrum, is out on patrol. And we're seeing that he uh, doesn't take himself all too seriously. He sees some people macking on each other, as the kids say, in a car. That's right. And Always. he's like, excuse me, sir. Um, are you wearing a condom? Because this is a safe sex zone. <laughs> what? What? How dare you? I never. And he just drives off. And he just Yeah. Smirks. Safe sex zone. You need to wear a condom. And then as he says that, that fucking truck, you see the Sioux Falls are flowing in the outside the window. He goes barrels right past him. He's a cop. He's got to, he's got to protect and serve. So he follows after this right. maniac. He's doing the right thing. He's not making the guy panic or anything. He's just calling it in. We know no sewage waste, no waste of any kind should ever pass through Beverly Hills. There's, he says there's no license plate on this truck. It says dangerous uh, materials, hazardous waste. I'm um, going need some help here. Um, yep. Driving on Rodeo Drive. So as that's Chase is uh, in pursuit, we go back over. Boom. He's had enough for one night. He's tired. He did play football this morning. But they do have a nice little convo where he's just like, you know what? I get it. I'm a jock hole. But I, I'm i not just any jock hole because I decide to be a quarterback. That's the thinking man's play. He's trying to th- yeah. show up his intellect with this woman. Well, he's got... 45 chess boards scattered throughout this room. Yeah. So he's pointing it out like, yeah, I play 45 people at a time. You know, that's my thing. And he's like, yeah, because see, here's the thing. I like playing the game, but I don't like being hit. Yeah. And that's, I really don't like being hit. So that's I why like I'm watching people get hit, though. That's why I'm the QB. Yeah. And the QB, that reminds you, it's the most important position in football. It's or like you know, the, football, especially. Being the top of a company. Except the company is like being the deep. king, and then he goes, checkmate. checkmate. I'm one of the many chess people. <laughs> and then he knocks the queen over and bumps into <laughs> and it. And lays the king on top of it. <laughs> and he's like, and then, because like we said, he's blowing, she, she, he's blowing some smog her way. I think what's happened here is she's lived a silver spoon in her mouth, so she's never seen a metaphor played out in such elegance. <laughs> Literally, yes. <laughs> he had to spell it out for her. And so he's like, she's gonna because he's he's playing the mental chess in his head. He's like, she's she ex- he does the classic move where he goes up, oh, and he's reaching his arm out, and you think he's gonna put it over his shoulder and pull her in for a kiss, and he goes, yeah, I'm gonna hit the hay. Yeah, because she's gonna expect me to go for a tits. So exactly. I'm gonna be like, I'm not interested. Quarterback. That's what we call a quarterback move. That he he's doing. Oh, the quarterback sneak. That's a play action. Pass play right there. Everybody's running to the left. Quarterback rolls out to the right. Passes it to the wide open. Sam Laporta. Fuck you, Lions. So she she's like, Ooh, okay. You know, I guess I'll, I'll see my way out. Right. And so They walk over the, the door. The nice scene. She puts her heels back on. She's like, no shoes in my house. He's one of those guys. Yeah. This is a very Quentin Tarantino yeah. scene, though, because we really had to focus on her putting shoes on, too. Well, because, well, that's. That's a symbolism there because as they open the door, Benitez, Branscombe Richmond, races down the street, shaking the house. It shakes the house. And she's like, ooh, she, that, I guess that turns her on. I guess it does. And she's just like, how about I stay? And then she takes her shoes back off. So that's the... That's this is like a I don't know was this a PG movie PG thirteen dude I couldn't tell you because they she's, barely swear in this movie so too. yeah so she's just like that's a symbolism we're gonna fuck we're gonna knock boots or uh, high heels you know what she did clunk clunk her heel into his shoe so knock boots so Elvin is continuing to chase Benitez and this <laughs> this is how an amazing driver Benitez is he hits a turn. Taps a car. The car explodes. Yeah. Bursts into flame. The trailer flips off. The semi keeps going. That's yeah. how amazing Benitez is. His, he doesn't even flip his car. He just flips the fucking tanker. Guys, this was this is one of the many This reasons. guy could fucking outdrive a tanker of Mad Max. That's how a great driver yeah, he is. Yeah, no. He should be in the Mad Max universe. Brands Comb should be, if they're ever going to do another Mad Max, he should be right there as, in a prominent role as one of the best drivers ever. But no, you're you're fucking dead on. And one of the many reasons why this movie was so expensive was because Brands comes like, no, I'm fucking doing all my own stunts and I'm gonna blow up this goddamn tanker. And he fucking did it in one shot. 
Well, it blows a car up by just running into it, sideswiping it. Somehow the car just bursts into flames. Yeah. And then fumes start emitting from the tanker. And then, like, oh, I guess I got to call this in. So he drives back to Beverly Hills HQ, the precinct. As he walks in, we see two guys in tuxedos with a fucking uh, big boy statue. And like, So the truck did flip over, the cargo. The cargo, but not the truck. He drove okay. away. So, and the cargo, yeah. we got to really emphasize, though, that yeah. the cargo is now releasing all these fumes everywhere. Yeah. And it's got danger, warning, should not be exposed to any kind of city, even Beverly Hills. We learn that it's fluorine that's being emitted. Yeah. And so he goes back to HQ. To just, I guess he, he could have called it in, but I guess he wants to be eye to eye with the, the it's chief. Very, it's very serious. He's like, what's going on with those, those guys with the big boy? And he's like, oh, they... They're from like a wedding, a wedding and got out of control. They stopped by a big boy's apparently. <laughs> so they just steal the thing. Yeah, the the big boy statue. And you know what? <laughs> to the audience, this is just a good shot. You're just like, oh, this is funny. We're used to prostitutes being pushed around and everything, but this is Beverly Hills. No prostitutes. So no, not at all. Yeah. If they are, they're like high class escorts. You wouldn't they're even escorts. notice. They're not know. prostitutes. They don't right. work the streets, but there is women. They work the sheets. Yeah, they de- <laughs> So oh, Murray. So I'm on fire. Woo. So uh uh so the hazmat crew arrives. <laughs> right after we said you're on fire. <laughs> By hazmat, I'm using I'm using air quotes on hazmat because he's got something up with these guys. They come up to the cops like, oh, you're gonna have to get the fuck out of here. This is deadly flooring. Yeah, there's cops just standing around like breathing in the air. It's like the first time I went up in my attic and started sweeping up all that fucking squirrel debris, you know, just breathing it in. And I was like, why am I doing this? This is the dumbest plan ever. Don't do that. Yeah. Let's get... I was going to bring up something today, but no, I don't want to bore the uh, listeners okay. anymore. All right. We're back at uh, Boomer's place. And I this, this would be like a po- post-fuck scene to me. Yeah, this feels no, post-fuck. Because now Laura, she's stripped down to her skivvies, and she's putting on the old jersey. Yeah, this is interesting, because we just went from... Usually a woman puts on your shirt after you banged her. Exactly. It was so weird. We went from, all right, I'm tired, you leave, earthquake slash car driving by, truck driving by, she starts smooching on him. Well, maybe I got a little bit of energy in me. Then we cut back to this house. She's wearing a bathing suit, and she's putting his... You think, like, he has, like, bathing suits ready, you know? Like, all sizes and everything? Apparently. Yeah. And so she puts on his practice... She was wearing, like, an evening gown. It was a gala event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it de- this definitely wasn't a lingerie. It was just straight up a, a one-piece <laughs> bathing suit. And then she throws no, it on... A, it was a two-piece. It was a one-piece. It was a two-piece. It was a one-piece. You're wrong. Okay. So she goes in the the bathroom, I guess, because uh, Boomer has a gigantic, almost hot tub-sized bathtub. Bubble bath, of course. He's right. a little modest. He doesn't want to you know, like, give it all away right away because he's naked. He's in a tub. And <laughs> I thought she got off on semis. Yeah. But she really gets off on the toes. Yeah. So there's a fun scene where she's walking in. She's got that number 12 mesh practice jersey draped over her bathing suit. I'll just go with that. Okay. Uh, and suddenly a tackle man tries to get her. I don't remember what these things are called. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Uh, practice dummy. I don't know. Practice but, dummy. Uh, tackle dummy. But, yeah, I've never seen the kind that lunges, lunges at you. Usually yeah. you lunge at them. It's usually on a sled, and then you push into it with but your other But if he's a QB, mates. I guess he would, he doesn't tackle, so he would need the opposite. Right. And it's so his she, old practice dummy. We'll call it Alzado, because that's what he calls that's it. That's what he calls it. After the great Lyle Alzado. Oh, why do you have this around? Oh, I'll tell you why I keep it round. And then he slinks back into the hot tub and lifts his little biggie wiggies over the bubbles. It keeps me on my toes. He's trying to be sexy. It's not working, Murray. And But work for Laura because she starts licking her lips because she sees those shrimp. And she's like, got any cocktail sauce? Remember, at that gala, it was rich people 
slurping down cocktail sauce, just shots There's of it. There's nothing classier than a shrimp cocktail. It's so clear, ultimate. it makes sense. It just that, screams rich yeah, elegance. It makes sense that rich people are just into shrimping. So well, yeah, because they're not into normal sex. That's for normies, right? They're the, they're into deviant shit. They're into eyes wide shut parties. I bet, I bet Robert Masters. I don't believe any straight sex happened on Epstein Island. It was all creepy, weird. Oh shit. yeah, of course it was. Yeah, I bet Robert Patters, Pat Patterson, Masterson, in this movie, everybody. This is uh, Robert Davies' character that I'm trying to refer to here. I bet he has fungi on his feet. I bet that's Prob- why. That's probably why she dumped him. Dumped him. She just had a little bit, too. Yeah, like something and he, he could probably treat. got it in the fucking shower room of the L.A. Cobras. Oh, my God. He was trying to be one with the team. Yeah. He Tony Condit with the and team. And he, he thought, like, oh, man, nerd. only a nerd would wear flip-flops into the shower. Yep. I got to go barefoot. That 100%. And he got it from Boomer, I bet. See? Because th- Boomer's probably masking it with the bubbles. Yes, He's probably got the antidote to fung- <laughs> foot fungi in his bubble bath. He's got the secret recipe. He got it from Fraser Crane. Meanwhile, Beverly Hills is sealed off. All streets are closed off. Hazmat team is at, uh, for some reason, the cops are now the hazmat team, and they go to the fire department to, uh, to uh, suit up, which is across the street from the police department. And did you notice, why was there a meat locker door on this, like, fire department locker Dude, room? Dude, I, I love <laughs> when they do this in movies. You see, this is what I love about 90s movies. They don't focus on these details, but they're there, and they're ridiculous. Why was that a meat locker door? So the big boys, who stole the big boy statue, right. open up the butt, because every, you know, every but uh, uh, big boy statue has a butt hatch. We all know that, right? Oh. So they they're not being locked up thanks to Calvin talking. You know, the yeah, he's place like, down. well, think, yeah, Calvin's like, how about we we get a lot of shit going on with this hazmat? Just let these assholes go, right? They're just a couple of kids who did nothing. A little bit of property crime little is harmless no- scamps. Exactly, it's nothing, and we should probably just let them go so we can deal with the fucking chemical bomb issue. Huh? A little uh, Palestine, uh, Ohio? Is That was right? I don't know what you're talking about. The train crash that happened like oh, yeah. months ago. Well, it happened months ago. I don't care. That's right. <laughs> and Ohio. And you're Who right. Who lost they, they, today? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So the, the, they open up Big Boy's butt and pull out some Uzi. It's the 80s still. I don't care if it said it came out in 91. It was filmed in 89. We need an Uzi. We need multiple Uzi. Well, we even had it in Cliffhanger. We know we're still holding on to... Uzis. So thankfully, the hazmat locker room has a meat locker door. So they just, you know, they do the thing where you put the little little metal rod in there to seal it off. Screwdrivers, everybody. Hey, stop that! And then we're, we never see these guys again. They're just, they're probably still locked in there. Who knows? Yeah. So some of our real cops, because what we're about to learn is that most of our cop force for Beverly Hills locked in that meat locker slash. The heroes, the real heroes. Yeah. Uh, wh- meanwhile, there's some cops still out of patrol. They're sent in- sentenced, directed to go on the outskirts of town and keep people out. Those are the L.A. cops that are. Like, oh, they were the L.A. They're, cops. they're sealing off Beverly Hills. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I didn't. I missed yeah. that part. Okay. And uh, then uh, the cops, Wink. or as you call them, police, police, show up. And there's they got to evacuate. So they got like Kelvin's going around. Okay, everybody, we got some buses here. We're gonna yep. evacuate now. And we Jerry was a race car driver. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> that was a good drop. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's party time. Uh, so now we got everybody being pulled out. We're just doing like a quick kind of. Let's be nice six hours, and you'll be back in your home. No Jerry problem. Go, I've got your fans. We're gonna go ahead, pick everybody up. Six hours. That's it. That's all it's going to take. we got to take you away from here. It's about yeah. six hours. And this is where the satire kicks in because we see people having their matting leaves come out. They're like holding a tray with champagne as they're like masters or going off to the bus. No, no, no. Go go sit back down. We weren't calling you. Everybody. You, you said matting Lee. It's yeah, like a dog. No. Well, just... that's what they did. They were like, do they have to come too? <laughs> because I need room for my standard poodle because everyone had – because. We, we know if you're rich, you got to have a standard pool. Standard. If not a Great Dane. Yeah. 
So that's all we see are like Great Danes and standard poodles getting taken out. And you wouldn't think this is a, a big clue to this movie, but no, you do have to pay attention to the standard poodles and Great Danes. Right, because they're having a good old time. They're ready to get on that bus. Masterson, even, even, once again, yeah. takes the fucking inhaler we, shot. It's worth pointing out, Masterson has to get on this bus too. So well, Of course he does, because there's gas. He has asthma. Exactly. No one's being left behind is the point. Everybody's being loaded up and taken to the safe space. All right. Guys, don't you remember? We were we were starting up the speeds and scale a moment ago, and we need to get back to it. We have a bubble bath. We have shrimp brining. It'd be pretty salty, right? Is that what kills the, the fungus? Salt? I don't know, but it might be the sh- shrimp a little more tasty. You're supposed to brine a turkey. Okay. Is fucking- Laura's like, you know what goes great with shrimp? Champagne. I'm going to go get some. I like this because his thing was, oh, do you need it? Because he's like, wait, you need to get drunk to fuck me? What is going on They just on came here? back from a bar for fuck's sake. How much drinking? They were drinking at the fucking charity thing, right. drinking at the bar. She's like, I got to get fucking shit faced. Apparently. So maybe you're right that he was like kind of feeling... A little self-conscious here. Like, you need more drinks to get in the tub with me? I know my dick's out here, and you're in a bathing suit and my practice jersey. She needs a little lubrication. But she wants the bubbly. And not just the bubbles in the in the tub, but she wants the other bubbly. So she, she goes to get it, and then she hears what's the commotion going on outside. So she puts on a Columbo jacket, just happens to be lying there. That's right. Puts it on, because he likes to do Columbo role play. That's Boomer's thing. <sighs> Who doesn't like to do Columbo role play? She uh, opens the door, and like, ma'am, you got to get out of this. Grab her and yank her away. And she's like, wait, wait, what about Boomer? Who gives a fuck about the Boomer? Who is Boomer? We're taking you to safety. And, of course, there's a nice moment here. She keeps yelling about Boomer, but it's some dog, and who cares about a fucking dog? And then the, the guy who says it pulls off the mask, and it's Farty! No! Fear! We're like, holy shit. I thought he was... He's a cop? What's going on? I'm confused. And now we get it. He puts a finger up in the air, puts his wrist up, and does a nice little circle with the waggy finger. All right, guys. Everybody, calibrate. Put on your Dungeon Master Excalibrate calculator wrist things. And they all start <laughs> they clicking literally, away. It's literally a calculator <laughs> with Velcro straps. I want to get you one of these shots because you want one of these shots, <laughs> of right? Of course I do. Uh, and there's one. It's high as tech. It was like prefix radical six to the eighth. It was like your math for figuring out the population or the math equivalents. Yeah, we use the same algorithms. We got 70 minutes until the National Guard arrive. Let's get to stealing. So everyone is in sync. Right. And the Foley's, they're even able to use... They're little Everything. fucking calculators. Excalibrate's powerful, dude. Right. This is, remember, Excalibrate was 84. This is the 89 version. Oh, my God. This is Excalibrate fucking 7.0. Well, this is at the point, because Excalibrate was made by the devil himself, was it not? No, it was made by Paul. But the devil made it into a wristband. Paul he, was a well, tower. Well, yeah, he, he, yes, he. The devil made it into the wristband, Murray. Well, yeah, but Paul made the, the hardware. Yes. Yeah. But Paul had towers. He was the Steve Jobs, the m- 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 Mesto, was that his name? <laughs> Mentos? He was the Steve Jobs. He's like, put it on your wrist. Right. And everyone went, wrist. Yes. And then Wozniak slash Paul was like, all right, I got to figure out, you know. And, and you know what, everybody? This wristband can play all your favorite tracks as if they were Nintendo songs. The only thing they changed about it, they got rid of the lasers. I thought that was the best part of the fucking X-Cal. I thought it was too. All, these nerds imagine, are all just in the math. Can you imagine how cool it would have been if this movie had lasers? I, it's definitely missing lasers. Yeah. The, at least to break through a bank vault or something. So Laura's the thrown on the, the bus. Oh, I think we need to preface what they're after real quick. Oh. Real quick. This is a heist. So the taking of Beverly Hills is about heisting the whole city. They're going to rob every home, every business, and even the bank. Right. Which is, which you learned in the beginning, has 
like ten million dollars in it. Right, and they're using the those uh, Excalibrates. <laughs> To break into every computer right. nearby, just like... It cracks every alarm code. I don't remember his name. And What was his name? Do you remember his name? On what? Excalibur. Paul. Paul. But just like Paul uses computer at will, that's how these people are using it. If they see anything electronic, no matter what it is, they're just like, I hacked it. Bleep, blur, bleep. Yeah. Well, they do have a command center where they're overseeing everything. And this is even better. Oh, the graphics. Oh, they're so good. So Laura's wa uh, leaving. She's like, wow. She notices. I love this bus scene. I didn't notice it. It didn't make it to the notes. They're serving champagne on the well, bus. Of course they are. <laughs> it's taking a Beverly Hills. <sighs> and she notices dogs running around. She's like, wait, this is dogs have better smell than we do. She's thinking this. She didn't say this. Dogs have better smell than us. Why are they cool with all this fluorine? Well, we're going to have to think about that one, everybody, because we're going back to the hot tub where Boomer is trying to figure out the right track to fuck to. He's like, fucking me so horny. No, it's a little on the nose. Sue Man Chew? Ah, oh, no, no, mm. no. That's sentimental to me. But well, I don't also know makes him fucking come really quick. Yeah. So is this a sec I, that, I, I that dare you. To fuck somebody with Sue Man shoes, do you think I'm sexy playing and last longer than 30 seconds? Yeah, it's right. impossible. That's right. It's impossible. And so he's like, no, I don't want to do that. I like he hits one song and he's like, that's too obvious. Right. And then me he, so horny. Yeah. And yeah, me so horny. <laughs> and then he puts on Let's get it on. <laughs> right. That's not too yeah. obvious. Yeah. I'm surprised. I bet the budget went to getting all these songs. There's a Janet Jackson song later in There's this There's so much music. There's a Oh, I wanted to say Suicidal Tendencies. There was one song. Boom. Oh, I can't think of it. So he's just getting ready. Back to the Foley's. They're breaking into jewelry stores. They're stealing all the jewelry out, punching it into their Excalibur that are going back to the main database. Right, because they're, they're like getting it down to the penny, how much all this shit's worth. Right. That's and amazing how it is. They can judge how much a diamond is worth. They're itemizing it, too. Every jewelry <laughs> they're stealing has a name <laughs> that's going into the database with the value, and they're all going into hazard waste, bright yellow dumpsters with lids. Yeah. That's how they get to get it all out of it. Yeah, the barrels are getting them out. So they're reporting back to Central Database. Then, meanwhile, on the outskirts of town, the mayor is coming, probably coming back from that gala event, even though it was in Beverly Hills. Where the fuck was the mayor at? There was, uh, there was a moment we talked about. I think we brought this up before, but Beverly Hills is so expensive that Ed Kelvin can't live there. He has right. to live elsewhere. And the mayor doesn't even live in the city because it's that expensive. Wow. The mayor even can't do Exactly. And that's Civil servants... Stay out. That's why he's driving okay. into right. that town. Makes sense. That was like one of the big satirical lines they brought up. So the cops are like, uh, you can't get in here. There's a hazardous waste thing going on. You said this was the LAPD. Yeah. So they're calling it in. So they have no idea what's going on. Right. They're just staying on the outskirts of town, making sure people don't get in. Right. And he's like, <laughs> do you know who I am? I'm the mayor of Beverly Hills. Can't you see? I have the fucking monocle. The, the, every, the people are not. The mayor of Beverly Hills has to wear a ceremonial monocle. That's right. And they're like, right this way, sir. They just fucking part like the Red Sea and let him through. He rolls into town. And he sees, like, you know, obviously we got this large operation going. They're trying to fight against this whole... Uh, gas explosion and everything, and he's just like rolling down his window. Varney, what the fuck are you doing? He Varney's in a wear in a full cop uniform now. Right, jacket, hat, everything. And Varney just nonchalantly shoots him in the face. <laughs> we get a nice uh a fucking uh silencer. No, uh, to live and die in L.A. face shot. Oh. And he's just like, fucking, you fucking rich fucks. I'm, time for, I'm taking my turn at the trough this time, pal. So and I'm like, who son am I supposed to be on? I'm kind of sympathizing with these fucking working stiffs. You know, right. every Everybody involved with this is an ex-cop. These aren't like career criminals. Right. Now, we don't know what they did. They might have been helping Epstein like we were talking about, which makes them criminals, in fact. And they were fired well, with Well, Kelvin sees Varney do this. Hey, I didn't know there were many kill. You said no killing. What's going on here? 
Calvin was supposed to be a good guy, Murray. You're telling me that he was in on it? I was as shocked as you were. Yes. But he is quasi good because he said, I didn't want any killing. I don't want to be involved with this. So we got to think about that one while we go back over to Boom. And he's like, I thought I was getting my toes sucked tonight. Where is that hussy? Throws on a towel. Nice touch in the detail. He's got bruises on his bikes. Remember, he was in a fucking football I game. Notice that. That was yeah. a beautiful fucking detail. So he's just got a towel wrapped around him. And he, because you know, when you're wet, it's hard to put clothes on and shit. Right. And, and he doesn't have his fucking Columbo jacket. That's usually what he puts on. Exactly. I was just going to say, he's walking through his foyer and obviously goes, Where's my Columbo jacket? She's supposed to wear that. I'm supposed to bend over and I say, Ma'am, just one more thing. My wiener. And then he penetrates. Opens the door. Hey, excuse me, officer. What's going on? Varney spots him. Kill him. And then two goons with mustaches just go, all right, where's the Uzis? So Boom goes running into back to, we always we always say, if you're in a <laughs> bind, go to the highest place. That's where you go, the highest oh. place. So he, he runs back to his bathroom. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you don't have a high place. Well, it was upstairs. Oh, was it? Yeah. Because he, like, knocks the cop down the steps. That's a dangerous place to put a hot tub. But if you're rich, it's not. I guess not, yeah. And that just shows how rich he was. That good like, hot tub, second floor. Second floor hot. How much money do you have? Second floor hot tub money. So he sets up Alzado first in front of the door. I, I think there was a, there was a continuity error because it looked like he was setting up, you know, pointing towards the door, and then later it's on the side. No, Murray, oh. I saw that. The okay. second time I watched this, I was like, yeah. no, that's wrong. Because she walks in, it comes from her left. We walk in, and now it's coming from the right. I was like, no, that's not right. Yeah. Well, he does set it up, but I thought he was setting it up until it would go right at the door. Because yeah, yeah, what yeah. happens is he sets it up, dives into the fucking hot tub. This, he's got a little straw. like he's, he's like breathing through the straw. Yeah, it's a shrimp cocktail straw. Meanwhile, the cops, they're just busting in every room, just shooting them up. Yeah, literally busting down a door, kicking it open, and just open firing with Uzis because that's what you do with Uzis. And you right. hope that it hits. Even if you aim, it doesn't always that's the, work. That's the thing about Uzis. You don't need to aim. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. Right. It's just going to go wherever it wants. It oozes. You have to be right with God for an Uzi to work. So he opens the door, and then Elzado fucking hits him, knocks him out a window. He goes flying. Second goon pumps in, starts firing. Remember, he's in a, a, a bullet hits water. You're not it's get gone. Yeah, yeah, no. Mythbusters did this, Murray. Yeah. It, 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 the bullet dissolves. That's the cure to all the world's right. problems. So, but we're like, holy shit, you know, he's going to get killed. No, because from behind, boom, 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 boom. Uzi Goon falls down. And behind him, Kelvin. He found his conscience. Found his conscience. He's willing to go back now. He's, there wasn't supposed to be any blood, and now he's shedding blood himself. He comes and sits down at the foot of the hot tub, and he's just... Oh, my God. I thought they said there was going to be no blood. It's supposed to be 70 minutes of my life. And I was going to do the wrong thing, but I was going to be paid very handsomely. And Boomer is not listening. He just gets He's out. He's literally doing an exposition dump, like yeah. basically confessing to all those crimes. Yes. You know, these are ex-cops. I don't know why they're doing this. I have to say no blood. No killing. Thank you. And Boomer's like, where the fuck is Laura? These I, toes need sucking. <laughs> he gets out of the hot tub. Uh, yeah, they're great. There was a woman here. By the way, gets toes. out of the hot tub, limping. He's still fucking keeping that. Most actors would just be like, all right, now it's time for action. Right, no. This guy, Ken Wall, I got to – you know what? You're right. I, I was kind of shitting on him. Well, it Brand was, I understand. It was the mullet. It, th it disturbed me. It's the mullet. It's the fact that Branscombe is the star of this movie, and he doesn't get enough in it. But oh, Ken Wall is doing a great job. Speaking of great jobs, Benitez – Ransco Richmond rolls up in a SWAT tank. Yup, because Varney's like, where is that fucking hitman I called? And this hitman, he is no mechanic. That is for sure. No. He, he, he's <laughs> supposed to be the best L.A. hitman, and he's just firing all like he's a yeah. kid in a candy store. Oh, my God. Well, I tried to describe this to Murray because he's like, he's the worst mechanic ever. And I was like, come on. How many missions do you think Bronson's mechanic went on where they're like, you get a tank? The whole shit he shut down. Shit. City is shut down. 
You get any gun you want. You can fire on anybody. No, of course he's going to be fucking over the moon. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I think I think uh, J. Michael Vincent definitely would have. I think still a mechanic would have kept it under control. So Benitez has to check in with Varney because they're working together here. Right, and we see there's there's this this movie. The theme of this movie is tension because there's tension between every fucking character. Yeah, and there's tension between fuck it's Varney's like. Oh, why does this guy get to get the SWAT tank? Why I could I could drive a SWAT tank. Right. He's like a classic little guy. It's perfect casting, by the way, that he is little because he's he's that fucking little guy mentality. Right. And Varn, he's just like, you know, what the fuck are you doing, man? Where you been? It's not about power. Do you know what the greatest defense for the human is? A human's na- this is Benitez saying this. You know, a human's natural defense is his intelligence. Oh. Uh- and Varney, Varney doesn't even know what to do with that. He's like, I'm Because he doesn't have any intelligence. Ex- exactly. He didn't even put this whole plan together, I bet. It's probably Masterson's plan. And he just, as he drops plan. that truth bomb, he just walks off. There's no respect for Varney from Benitez. Yeah, this is great. This is my favorite, like, tension of the movie. It's between right. these two. And they're supposed to be the bad guys. Right. So Kelvin, he's, like, explaining everything. He's like, look, it was a bunch of extra cops and, you know... You know, we we just we just want to get a piece of the pie, you know. Boom! By the way, he's going ahead. He's putting on some. Still gear. ignoring him. He's putting on his jersey. Yeah, he's barely listening, but he's doing his two-minute offense drill here because he's got to get downfield quick. No Murray. huddle. No huddle offense. No huddle offense. He's, he's got to. He's in the, the shotgun. That's right. And so he's getting there. Calvin trying to explain all this. He's getting a fucking syringe out. We're like, what the fuck's going on here? But as sports balls fans, we know. We inject our athletes with the best shit. So he's getting a cortisone shot. Right. Well, I like that t- that nice touch because most people just forget about it. It's a beautiful touch. You know what? This is one of the things that if Die Hard had a cortisone shot nearby, <laughs> he would have used it. Right. He There's a lot of shots it. in this movie, too. There's a shot later on. Oh, okay. But uh, And he's like, look, I just want to get the fuck to L.A. I want to get out of Beverly Hills. and You're going to help me, buddy. I just want you to know, if you're feeling any doubt right now, I'm a master of moving downfield, and they don't know that I'm in the game. They do. They do. Varney already saw you. He <laughs> sent people to kill you. They know you're in the game. But apparently this pep talk still works for the audience of one. So they, they immediately they run down to the front door. It's like this giant fucking door. And he's looking through the people. Like, Kelvin's pulling at his coat strings. I got to tell you, sir. I got to tell you, sir. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to be able to spy on them a little bit here. I got to tell you, sir. They've got... No, don't worry. Not even a tank could knock this door over. And as he looks through the people one more time, we see Benitez in his tank barreling down there. And it crashes right through the fucking front door. They're running for their lives. Amazing. Run out back door. So we just get the great scene of just Branscombe chasing them in a tank, blowing houses up. I'm glad they at least got some good shots of Branscombe behind the driver's wheel. It's not. It's not like levers or anything. Everybody, it it is a driver's wheel, and there's a button that says laser, a button that says rocket. Never hits the laser button, unfortunately. So he's just literally blowing houses up. We're just, they're the, our, our heroes are running. His houses are blowing up behind them. They run into like the uh, the clubhouse that every fucking rich community has. Right. Go across the uh, basketball court. Uh, jump the fucking like, there's like a fence. Of course, there's a fence. <laughs> And you know where they land, everybody. It, we are talking about California. Constantly wet alleys there. Juicy alleys. We're talking Zargatera. Zargatera. Territory. God, why can't I say that? So they have never heard of the legend. Of I'm those. just happy that you spelled it correctly for the first time. Yeah, you still can't say it correctly. No, it's a hard one to say. Zargatha. That's all. Zargatha. There we go. Zartha. Yeah. You need you always want to add an A in there. I do. I, I know him better though. And so they're they're they they're are unaware of yeah. Zarthus. So they, they're like, All right, we could take refuge here. And they find a nice trash can that they both can hide in. Right. What the fuck? Was like seaweed in it? What the fuck was going on? Was it, was it kale? Maybe it, it is a fucking... Japanese family and they like to make sushi. I don't know, but it was it was like a lot of brush. You're right. There was a lot of sea brush in there. Maybe Bodhi's crew was Maybe, just out surfing. Uh, yeah, we know they're all about recycling. So they they, are. Would, they would never litter. They do a lot of crime, but this might have been a compost bin. 
So they're hiding in there like, okay, pal, I guess we're safe here. And then he's like, wow, even the Beverly Hills garbage is better than my garbage. Right. This is Calvin, of course. That's yeah. that <laughs> wimpy voice you're hearing right now. And he's even, like, snacking on a little bit of it. He's like, Jesus Christ, this shit's so organic. And then Benitez just runs through a fucking wall with a tank. The fucking runs into the trash can, pulling it, dragging it. Yeah, just sliding it, pushing right, it. Right, because it's in the front of the, tr- of the yeah. tank. And, and they're so coming they're, up on a, a police car down at the end of the Zagatha Alley. We get a nice moment here where a uh, 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 boomer pops out of it, stares into Branscombe's eyes, and then pops back. He's like, we're in trouble, friend. We need a, uh exit. Pocket left. We're, we're fucking fourth and long here. We're fourth and long, friend. And a QB sneak is not the answer, but it might be our only answer. Solution? Resolve? Anyways. Well, no, Benitez didn't see them because he... No, he did not. Because he... That's what confused me They're about me to about be to do a Malachi Crunch because there's a cop car at the end of the street. Somehow, Mirac... Hold on. What was that? A Malachi Crunch. Malachi Crunch. Okay. The, for some reason, the trash can just slides across when they reach, like, an intersection. It yeah. Just, uh, it's just, it just does things. It needed to. So the boys get out, and they're off running, and so... There's, <laughs> so we got to point out... This is supposed to be, like, just clean up this fucking uh, tanker. It's leaking gas. There's expl- – houses are blowing up. Yeah. So people on the outside, like the L.A. cops, are like, what the fuck's going on in there? Oh, it's just EPA doing some tests. Yeah. Or- there's uh There's some gas, you know, because, of course, this is a dangerous gas. So some of that, there's a little bit of drilling. You know, don't worry about it. You know, it. gas is very explosive. Yeah. There were do- you you know- ever light your own fart? You know, th- one of our great presidents once said, never uh, let a good crisis go to waste. You know, crisis tunerty. And so we're doing a little fracking while uh, the town's evacuated. So while that's going on, police chief and Ferris Bueller's dad rolls up. He, he has to live in Pasadena. He can't even afford to live here. And he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm the police chief. Like, oh, you need to go to the, uh, the command center in, Cent- in uh, uh, Century City. Robert Masterson's hotel. And he's like, okay, whatever. I'm down for it. So we do a quick cut over to that hotel. Laura's already there. She's hanging out. There's dogs running around all over the place. All the rich people. Well, basically everybody in Beverly Hills. Robert being the perfect host, mingling. Anybody need anything? Dude, they've got fucking craps, roulette. they got the whole Vegas floor going on right now. This isn't a crisis. This is a fucking event. This is a staycation. Yeah. And he's like, he goes to Laura, hey, I, I, I'll I, have one of the stores open up. You can get some clothes. You know, I don't want that disgusting yeah. jersey you're wearing. Yeah, those filth that we drive in to work our stores, we told them they have to come in. Don't mind the gas. Just come in. We'll right. worry about it later because we might need some clothes, you know. People are evacuating. Don't you realize how serious this is? So, he's like, just get wherever you want. Use my name. You can have wherever you want. Excuse me. I'll use my dad's name. I mean, my own name. I'll use my own name. Laura. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so she's like, she goes up and she not overhears the concierge. Because the concierge is dragging three dogs around. Right. And he's frantic. And he's just like, oh, my God, sir. In his Clark Kent outfit. Slicked back hair. I'm surprised there glasses. wasn't. Uh, oh, what the fuck was that? What's the dog that has all the wrinkles? Oh, boy, I don't know. That was such a hot dog it, in the 80s. I like, know the dog you're thinking of. Yeah. I don't know my dog names at yeah, all. That was, I'm surprised there wasn't one of those. It was just yeah. a great thing. They, need, they needed big dogs. They're standard poodles and Mastodon great or something. Yeah. It's not a Mastodon. <laughs> I'll come to me. Mastiff. That was the no, one I was thinking no, of. No, it's not the No, Mastiff. that's what I was thinking of, though. Yeah, not I'm, Mastodon. I'm talking about the ones that have, like, literally wrinkles. No, I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, it'll come to me. Yeah. But uh, I had to fix my mastodon problem. Yeah. <laughs> I meant mastiff. So she, uh, she happens to overhear as the concierge with the dogs runs up to a guy. He's like, excuse me, sir, in the Clark Kent outfit. Are you the EPA, by the way? Uh, yeah, sure, I'm EPA. Okay, cool. The chief he's of police. He's got the little thing with clip on. He does, thing. he does. He that's, forgets he has it. He has yeah. to look down. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's me. And he's been alerted that the chief of police wants to talk to him. Right. And Laura wants to pull a Karen. And like, I need to speak to somebody in charge. So she follows after the yeah. EPA guy. She's smelling something off. And it's not just dog piss and shit. Or fluorine. Or that. 
All right, Benitez is having a good old time blowing up uh, shit, following Boomer. We're just, we're literally just running through set streets and everything. <laughs> it's not bad. It's no. just it's just action. It's just houses blowing off. Right. So it's not really doing a whole lot for me. I want it. At more. least it's a real explosion. If I had they, to see a C, this would be CGI explosions. Yeah. Now, and I don't want to see that. This is why I said like Evasion USA did this better. Because the explosions meant a little bit more. I By think. the way, this uh, movie was filmed in Mexico City, so it was all fake Beverly Hills sets. I'm sorry, everybody. It was not really Beverly Hills. I, I killed the illusion. I'm sorry. It's okay, Murray. So Boomer's f- had it. That's all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. It's enough of this shit. I'm not playing defense anymore. Calvin, sit up on that fence. I got a plan. Wait there. <laughs> then I'm going to give the call. Blue 22, blue 22. And then Omaha, you, Omaha. You jump LeBron down. LeBron James. You jump down and run left. Oh, sir, is that my left or your left? Your left. left. <laughs> so, like I said, these are like, I like it. They're bumbling idiots. Both of them are. Yes, and it's coming together. I like, like and also, there's, I think it was in the, when they were, he was getting ready, he took the cars on chat. He's like, I'm going to need you. Because I don't know shit about guns. Because he did take yes, one of the right. cops belts with the little walkie talk. No, you're 100% right. And I like that because he's like, it's guns scare heart. me. I don't fucking want to deal with guns. Like, instead of like in any most movies, he's an expert marksman all of a sudden. Right. You see, this is again where it separates itself from modern movies. Where every old white guy, Bob Odenkirk, we love you. <laughs> but that movie sounds stupid as shit. Yeah. Where it's like, oh yeah, deep down in my brain I was ex-CIA. <laughs> And now I can fight you. No, I loved Boomer because of this reason. So Boomer lures uh, Benitez into his trap. Like, hey, over here. So Benitez follows him. Right. And why is Calvin sitting on the fence? Because he serves no purpose. He's after He's Boomer. literally and figuratively sitting on the fence. Thank Pick you. Pick a side. Turtle sitting on a fence post. Yes. Jim and Hornet so thing. they go. They, they uh, Benitez is chasing them. I don't know. I Kel- what was Kel- you're you're right. What was his point? No, he because he's point. like, all right, now go over the other side. Yeah, and, and then, then Boomer jumps over the fence. Boomer fucking vaults it. Incredible. He pulled the fucking Josh Allen. Yeah. Oh my god. Good call. And then Benitez goes through the fucking fence, and there's a pool on the other side. So the the, the SWAT tank is taken out. And of course, Calvin. Or- Calvin Boomer is there just to gloat his victory. He's fucking thrusting his hips. He's doing the gritty and everything. Yeah, yeah. The, he did the icky shuffle. He was doing some amazing fucking touchdown dances. That's right. And that's why he says touchdown asshole. And then fucking Benitez crawls out, drenched fucking mullet. It's only halftime, my friend. All right, back to the fucking hotel, Laura. I don't know why, because that fucking hotel. I just want to swear now, apparently. Because there's at, no swearing in this movie. We're at that point. Uh, Laura sits back down with Robert, and she's got some company, and they're just playing a little bit of, uh, again, this is just a casino event. Rich people in They bathrooms. always got to be making money. That's right. why they're so successful. Right. There's there's people in, like, bathrobes and uh, masks walking around with their dicks out. I was like, what the fuck? They think, there's, they think they're at an Eyes Wide Shut party. Exactly. It, eyes are wide open, by the way. They're not wide catastrophe shut. catastrophe yeah. is an Eyes Wide Shut opportunity. Right. So, of course, the rich people are just fucking. There's too much good liquor for them not to fuck each other. Well, that explains why a character that's coming up is plays an important role. Okay. But we'll get to that. So she's like, she's talking with Robert, like going over it. Like, well, if there's, he's like, there, there was a fluorine, like. Ro- yeah, Robert like, is just pushing. The EPA has already said it. So that's, Trust the government. That's the fact. We this is where I know, this is where he does the heel turn. He said, trust the government, Griff. Yeah. And we don't ever trust the government. Exactly. Never. And she's like, wait, though, dogs. They would smell. They would smell the fluorine, and they were fine. Yeah, I. Saw, they loved it. They were smelling. They were, I saw these dogs when I was walking up. There's a shapoodle and a schmoozy and, and a and a jack terrier and a labrador, and they were all just playing around the truck that fell over. And then a guy goes, "Actually," and this is where we we learn about Mort, the spermicide king of Beverly Hills. And this is incredible because Mort. 
pops in with his Ashley, and Robert just turns up and goes, Shut the fuck up. You work for the largest. You're working on the Bronschlong 3.9 or whatever you are doing. And he's like, actually, the dogs would be dead if they are even around. That the sense of smell. How do you know anything? You think the EPA is lying to us? You sell dick objects to people. But meanwhile, also, I want to say the police, the police chief is also in this conversation. And he's just like, Mort. Mort's like, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think it's fluoride. He thinks it's fluoride instead of fluorine. Okay, so <laughs> to lead you to this. He announces that before he got into the sex business, he was the greatest biochemist of all time. Right. He, he's like, and, he's like uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah. And then he be, he realized there's no math, money. It was yeah, yeah, there's no money in being, uh, you know, just a scientist. So he became CEO. And now he works in the spermicide business. Yeah, he's a sperm murderer. Right. So his actually... There's an inordinate amount of seminal fluid, and I killed it at all. So his biochemicism, he just starts fucking breaking it down by the molecules. And everybody, it's like a rapper spitting bars. He's spitting science, and everybody's just like a gasp. Even the chief of police is like... Sir, I'm going to need to talk to you. Not about those sex objects, but I do need to say you saved my marriage. He's like, I don't want to talk about the sex objects, but I also want to tell you about the sex objects. Well, no, he needs to talk about serious business, but he does also have to thank him for the fact that if it weren't for his objects, he's got that vibrator Because thing. he can't, because he's like, I couldn't afford another kid because of, the, because of my fucking... Uh, my, I th- I thought it was the vibrating, my income. The vibrating. No, it's like thank you. No, he's thanking him for the spermicide because he's like, if I had one more kid, I'd be living on the street. <laughs> I'm not a fucking police. I live in Pasadena. Right. I can barely afford to live that close. A little to old house. lady in Pasadena can't afford to live there. Varney, meanwhile, he's just like, hey, go fake a take a uh, fake a taxi spill over there. And according to these guys, it's a faking a taxi spill is just lighting off a smoke bomb. Yeah. So they laid off a smoke bomb. They literally it? ask, which color? The white one. <laughs> All right, I got it. Lights it up. Perfect camouflage for our boys, though, because they need some wheels, Griff. I don't know why they just didn't. What happened to uh, Kelvin's car, his police car? Why don't they just use that? Did they? I don't think they ever had it. Because it might have gotten blown up by Benitez. It was like they're out in the streets because Kelvin pulled up and came in. But after that, they were just out on foot. So they haven't had his car this whole time. I know, but where is his car? It would be blown up or just sitting outside of uh, uh, Boomer's house. And they're very far away. So from they need to go to a rent-a-car place. And they use the the smoke as cover. But you can't lose smoke. There's Benitez. Right. And Benitez, when he's got... You know his what, tank got fucking tanked. He's furious. Right. We do see the tank come back later. So if well, yeah, they pull it the t- out. Yeah, they yeah. pull it out. That, oh, yeah, that's right. We saw what happened to his thing. Yeah. So he's in the back of like a little truck at this point. But, yeah, our, our boys are trying to get by him. They're trying to use the disguise of the smoke and everything. But Benitez, we are seeing that he actually is a great hitman because he sees through the smog right into Boomer's eyes. So we see them running away. The guys try to give chase, but there's just enough dark fazalies that they're able to weave their way through and get to this uh, used car lot. Oh, it, was, it was a rental place. Rental place, okay. And he's like, hmm, what do you want, the Lambo, the Ferrari? No, the Rolls Royce is the closest one. And so they, the Benitez and the boys show up to stop opening fire. Right. I don't know how this worked out, their plan, because they're just, they're just getting bullets hailed down the on The rest them. of the movie is just our boys running and getting shot at. Right. So we'll cut to the chase. They're crawling around. They're escaping the bullets, eluding the bullets. They get into the Rolls Royce, and they drive off, and that's it. Right. Back to the command center of the, the police. We're up to $250 million because they they're going for a billion, Griff. That's the goal is a billion. And Varn, again, he's got to meet up with Benitez because Benitez's job, catch Boomer. And he hasn't done it yet. So he's fucking just giving him shit. I thought you were the deadliest hitman in all of L.A. I could have called up Angeltown. 
I could have had the Angel Town boys with their one fucking Uzi come up here and handle this for me. Look here, asshole. You're going to be the deadest hit man in L.A. if you fuck up again. All right, so boom. They go to Robert's house for some reason. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because he, kn- well, he knows Robert. So he figures, like, if Robert's there, he'll... F- you know, he'll vouch for me. I don't know what the fuck. That could be it. So and they're they're hanging out, and this we get we we see this is, even the rental cars have the finest fucking Cavassier in the back. Right, and three different glass, uh, you know, and decanters. Yeah, yeah. And it's like crystal. It's some fancy as shit. Right, these are and rentals. Ric Flair would drink woo out of this. So- <laughs> You won't drink woo out of anything. Uh, I just love that this car's been sitting out in a parking lot with the liquor in it. That shit, uh, it's got to be good. It's aging, right? yeah. Aging. <laughs> car aged. So Kelvin decides, hey, why not take a drink? So he takes a drink off that. At uh, the- and, we're, you know, Boomer's inside doing some shit. We cut over to the hotel to see Laura as she follows Robert because now she's really suspicious of Robert. Yeah, she's like, he trusts the government? I knew I, that's why I didn't fuck that guy. Right. Reagan's not in office. So she follows him down to the bowels. And there's like even, there's like a, a gate to get into the, the bowels of the bowels. Yeah. And she overhears him talking to that EPA guy. Right. Hey, just, you know, fake it. I don't know. I don't know. To, he's I like, know he's like, shit. act like you don't know anything, like a real government guy. Exactly. And then when they ask you, just say you don't get it paid enough. And that, you know, they'll bro down with you after that. And then he comes back. She hides behind the stairwell. He goes up through the, the gate and then she gets locked in there because she can't get up in time. Shit. So she's stuck in the bowels of the building. And we return to Boom, who's returning to the car. Maybe Boom, Boomer went here because he feels safe about robbing his boss. That could be it. Because, Stealing from the rich. He's yeah. pulling a fucking Peter Pan. We don't know Boomer's history. <laughs> it's, it's Robin Hood, not Peter Pan. Who did I say? Peter, Peter Pan? Pan. Oh, okay. So he, so he robs from the rich and gives to himself. <laughs> and he's got a thing of gas. A tank of gas, yeah. And he's sitting back there with his tank of gas, Calvin. What are you doing? Why are you bring your tank of gas in here? Uh, I don't know. And he's stuffing rags into it. Of course, we all know. He pours out it. all that prime cuvassier and starts filling it up with gasoline. Hey, that's worth more than I make in a year. Check out this receipt. This car's worth six figures. I, I, I don't know how I do it. I just wanted a little bit. My of house money. isn't even worth this much. And then we get a nice spiel about yeah. he's just a hardworking man. And he's just like, God, what they pay us, it's, it's abysmal here. And of course, I can't, Bo- like, like, he's like the fucking police chief can't even afford to live here. Boomer will not hear this man's depression story. So he hits back. You know what, tonight? I was with a woman. I've been with a lot of women. I've had my toes sucked dry for but weeks on Every end. nationality. Every, every single walk of the life. Sri Lankan, Asian, uh, Japanese, uh, Korean, what are you Russian. Stuck in Asia for some reason. <laughs> well, this is Boomer talking here. And so finally gets to his point. Canadian. They're the best. Canadian. Finally gets to his point. But tonight. As an adult, as a real, not a child. I've always been a child. Tonight, got with a real woman. Woman, Hulk Hogan. He's known this woman all of two hours. Two hours. And he's like, I've never been in an adult relationship. I find- You're not one in one now, motherfucker. No. no. It's like, you guys were going to fuck. As I mean, far- it was like. Exactly. As far as you know, this girl was drunk. She drank so many shrink cocktails. And you know what they put in those cocktails? Booze. And then they went to a bar, and then she went back and wanted more booze. She might have just been hungry for L.A. Cobra's she quarterback. She was hungry for some jock hole. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Lori eats ass. She was going to rim jock hole him. Yeah. Kelvin goes, hmm, yeah, I was married. Not that you care. My wife left me for a dentist. Probably better than oral sex. Great joke. Rim job, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Robert goes back to the database room. They're up to 500 mil people, but there's a problem. We got some loose cannons out on there, oh. out, on the, out on the field. Okay. So, yeah, of course, Murray, we haven't put as many football metaphors that are in here. I think we've worked them in or them 
ourselves. But right. yeah, there are so many football metaphors scattered. So our boys stumble into fucking Benitez again because why not? Yeah, this time they're driving up with intent though. But here, I, this is another nice touch because he, he admits, I know nothing about guns. I've never shot a gun in my life, but I know how to throw shit. Yes. So that's why he took put the uh, Molotov cocktails. He's like, I can throw, I can fucking hit it right through a fucking tire fucking 30, 50 yards away. It could be moving. I could still hit it. Right. Yeah, it could be going over. I can put it on its back shoulder on the sideline. So he says, hey, Benitez. By the way. You think we have awful fucking lines? The the fucking lines, the the they're let's just say even Schwarzenegger couldn't save these lines. No. They're awful. They are bad. He goes catch, throws at uh fucking throws the mouth of hell right on fucking Benitez. He's yeah. ignited in flames. He jumps down, and you know what? We love our product. We love Pac Jelly, and I've never seen uh Robert Brand. Uh, Brands called Richmond. Looks so good. He looked great on fire. All right, yeah. I, I wanted and, to get close to that fire. But it's but with the, the thing about Peck Jelly, it's, it's a flame retard. Excuse me, flame mentally challenged. <laughs> and he so he tats himself out. Right. See, he's like, ooh, this is my best fucking suit. See, again, this is I wanted the battle of the intellectuals. I wanted to see Brands Comb scheme, and I wanted to see uh uh, uh, boomer scheming. Instead, we just get them kind of like bumping into each other and stuff. Like the ninja ninja fight where you just clash swords, but then they disappear forever. And so I, I didn't like that because now we have to go back to what our real intellectual part of this movie is: Laura snooping in, and Robert's calling into Varney, and he's like, "What's going on? What's the situation?" And it's like, there are these. F- He's like, he's like, no, there's too much shit going on. There's some variables we did not count yeah. on. Yeah. So I, do you think we can still get everything going on here? Because I think we might need to call it in. And Robert, he gives a thumbs up. Moving in the primary target. We're wrapping it in after that. And Varn, he's got one last warning for him. Oh, by the way, that loose cannon we're talking about, it's number 12. Boomer! And it just so happens that old diehard Boomer has a radio of his own. Right. He's got one of the, the cop radio he stole from the Uzi cops. So he's listening in, and he's able to talk back, so he just chimes in. Hey, jerky boys, it's me, Boomer, and I'm here, and this is personal. While that's going on, Robert looks, glances back, and he spots... Fucking uh, Laura looking through the window and the door. She's fogging it the fuck up. Of course she's there. And it's like, give me a stun gun. Well, yeah, he says, give me a gun. And a guy offers him a handgun. And he goes, no, the stun gun. So he's in my cattle prod. Yeah. So she takes off. He catches up with her. Of course. And he's like, why do you want this boomer guy? You're just giving me another notch in his jack hole. Uh, are you a little genital obsessive? And he's like, aren't we all? And then he starts laughing at his own joke. And this is where the movie really gets high on its own hog. Because he's laughing so hard that he has to hit his inhaler. Right. I wonder if there's going to be a payoff for that. I hope so. Mm. So Laura she- has enough chance to run away. She runs into a door. It's a giant turbine room. I loved exploring hotels as a kid. And the giant... 30 foot drop. Griff calls it exploring. Fans. We call it griffing. Okay. Being Which, where, you, where hey, you shouldn't be. As Mike, looking to steal. As Mike pointed out, uh, griffing was in the New York Times crossword. It was search. the Washington Post. It wasn't good enough for the New York Times. Oh, my God. Okay. But I was still there. It's still there. That's Yes. Big. It's called stealing is now griffing. Yeah. It's official. You should be proud of yourself. Hey, I'm proud of us. So. Robert runs in after her. He looks down. There's like a fan. Uh, this must be. I don't do, do. Is that the air conditioning system for a giant building? A gigantic uh, tunnel, a tube with a flan. One maybe, fan. Maybe, one fan. Maybe in Mexico. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be New Mexico. I don't think anywhere in America. It's I'll, not even going fast. It's going, and we see Laura's jacket. And he's like. Oh, well, I guess you got chewed up by the turbine. It's a fucking nuclear missile silo. It's that deep. 
this, yeah, it's amazing. I love that they threw this in there. So there's like a little catwalk that goes around the edge, and he's just hanging over there. Meanwhile, she's hanging from a pipe underneath his feet. Which was like fully underneath, so her fingers weren't on the grate he was walking on. So supposedly he could not look down and see her. And he's like, I guess she's dead. Well, he assumed he saw her jacket down there, so she's got to be dead. There's no blood. It's like, it's barely going at all it right. probably wouldn't even chop you you fall right through the turbine so he walks out laura pops back up there's another door that's marked exit and she just <laughs> walks go, out that's it. like at ground level street level <laughs> and she sees the cops yeah and so she just walks out the door and then she stands there for a minute it's like wonder i think because she saw them like loading up jewelry and shit so she was that's why she didn't she run got, to them. yeah she just kind of got transfixed there and then you see masterson walk up behind her sorry <laughs> laura and so she is knocked out she's stunned by that gun all right roadblock now we see the guys are getting ready to shut everything down so the roadblock is being told to be opened up to let ambulances through but the ambulances are full of all those barrels filled with the, the loot. And they're waiting. There's a plane waiting at an airport for them to just un unload all their filthy lucre. And now we haven't had enough fun lately. So we just go back to Boomer and Calvin just driving around, chucking mouths and <laughs> cocktails at shit. Having a great time. But my hey, super tight spiral. Hey, spirals tight. Goff, take lessons. You fuck. Uh, but also. He's thrown more than three. I counted three. So apparently he bought, <laughs> he got more bottles to, you know. And uh, to there, maybe there was a piss jug in the back that he used. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But no, it's fun. And the music is fun, too. <laughs> what, I, it's that one song. Do, do, I can have it all with you. How? I don't remember that. I have no idea what do, you're doing. Do, do. Man, I'm so sorry. Well, everybody. basically, what we're saying is you need to buy the soundtrack to Taking a Break. Every Hills. '90s jam I've ever heard is on this uh, album. So soundtrack. we're back in the command base, the criminal command base. Robert wakes Laura up. Hey, he's like, hey, like nothing happened. He's like, I got you some of that, you some coffee. You know, yeah. black with sweet and low. How you like it? Uh, you know. I always thought there was a little electricity between us. You see, they're playing. <laughs> this is fun. And she. <laughs> so the the chief is like, I have to take control. We're back at the hotel. Now. Okay, yeah, we cut away. <laughs> chief is like, I need to like, speak to somebody in charge. The EPA guy's got his whole command center set up, all these laptops and everything. He had been wanting. The chief had been wanting right. to talk to the EPA man. So he finally gets his opportunity, and he goes up there and he starts just. He Hit does. He lines. does the no. He does the classic thing. No, he sits them with nothing because the the police chief does the classic thing: ask questions and answers his own questions. So the guy is just like, mm, mm. he's like, oh yeah, yeah, we should probably do that. And he's like, hey, I wanted to get a chopper in here. Is that a good idea? No. Oh, you know what? You're right. It's because if I bring the chopper in, the blades will be spinning around and that will spread the fluoride a little bit flur flur further. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah, so how many cubic meters has this fucking uh, gas traveled at this point? <laughs> he does say this fucking gas. Yeah. And the APA guy's like, mm -hmm. You know, this gas fuck has been mm -hmm. fucking all over the gas. Mm -hmm. They're not. And he's like, yeah, okay, I get Hey, thanks for this great talk. You've really illuminated the situation for me. And then he just walks off. And now we're going back down to the police. They've been working on this bank for like... The whole all, movie, all yeah. seventy minutes, right? And they're just trying to carve out the outer wall. Yeah, we don't. We, so we're thinking they're trying to ca like cut out the back of the vault or something. You think that they're trying to get in the back of you know a big Scrooge McDuck gold coin doubloons, uh, bullions, and cash? But wait till you see what we have here. Wait everybody. till you see it. But instead, we're gonna go back to boom, Boomer. Boom. Now we're rocking out some Janet Jackson, Black Cat, down, down. Down, 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 down. We're getting fucking cars just flying everywhere. Now our boy Benitez is in on the fire game. He's got a flamethrower on the back of a truck. And so our guys just drive by him into a underground parking uh, lot. Like you said, Benitez is like a kid in a candy store. He's like, I got to try that flamethrower out. And so he's having <laughs> so much fun, and I want him. I love watching brands come, but that's us. That's us. Yeah. We've. 
we're too into brands co. And so what do we know that our boys have in our car? Boomer. Can of gas. So he's just dripping gas everywhere. <laughs> and That'll and, stop. And fucking bananas is just lighting it up. So we just got fire <laughs> yeah. all over the yeah, place. Yeah, because they go in. Because like we said, if you're in danger, find the highest place. So they go in a parking garage. And Benitez is just shooting flames at him. He sets their car on fire at one time. But it's fun. It's nonstop fun. Right. Just everything in sight. And both sides finally reach the top floor. Calvin can't see because their whole fucking window is just like blown out and everything. It's on, the car's on fire. He right. can't see. And he just crashes over the ledge, which drops onto the next lower level, which uh, buckles underneath them. And they end up in a Chinese uh, sushi restaurant or right. something. So Benita's like, there's no way they could survive that. Yeah, he's, he's, I'm, I'm kind. I think I'm kind of agreeing with Varney. He's not the best fucking. <laughs> yeah, this was the <laughs> moment where I said, "Oh man, Benita's isn't very good." Yeah, you gotta like check the box. Yeah, especially now. This is like the second or third time you thought you had him killed. Right. So he reports it in. He tells him, "Yep, he's dead." So uh, Robert's like, "Hey, what's going on with that wall? You gonna you gonna send it to the burial plot?" And we're like, what the fuck are they talking about? That's some uh, language there. Boom's listening in on it. He like, obviously doesn't know what it means. And he's like, this has to be the primary target. And I got to get that primary target because that's, you know, I need my edge. Right. We're in the final moments here, everybody. So don't worry. We're closing this thing out. So Robert's like, all right, buddy. Pack. He's in the he's in the command center. Pack it in. We're shutting down. We... We tried to reach a billion. Maybe next time. Yeah, don't worry. We're still getting away with a lot of fucking loot. You know how much? The final haul, Griff? $720,253,500. If you're smart, you'll invest that. Next thing you know, five years down the line, it's worth eight times that. So Robert grabs Laura, and they get in the back of an ambulance. So we're believing they're going to just go to that plane that's waiting for like all the loot being collected. Right. And then we go over that giant heist right. at the first bank i'm again expecting the scrooge mcduck lot right so they, the wall falls down well it's, it's put on a forklift yeah and benitez s- is the one pulling his tank is back he loves it he, just, he, loves like, he wants to do tank. everything he can with it it's he's like he's like wow tank. this has like a fucking like thing a crane like, yeah I'm it does it. it it does yeah. it all and i love this too because they literally use steel cable to pull the wall down all they do is put a fucking shoelace not on the car and on the wall we see that they're not going into the vault they want the wall because there's a mural on it oh i did not gather that yes i thought they went in and pulled something out but no, no. it was the wall itself yeah interesting and the and the one of the cops goes i've never been so close to a billion dollars so this fucking why it makes no sense there'd be a billion dollar painting in a bank right so again we're spreading the word guys this is it we're pack it all in we're getting out of here we're lighting everybody back in it's everybody's getting a little too close our epa guy is giving too much of the game away so boomer and kelvin they're in another building hiding out we saw boomer had brought a display case from the japanese restaurant it's full of fucking ninja throwing stars that's right and he's and, like i gotta find something to put these into <laughs> right look around yeah they're like in a jewelry store and all the jewelry's been taken but there's still some like designer bags yeah some gooch so he has a this was a good thing too because he's got like a woman's handbag and he's putting his ninja stars it was all. good I liked it yeah. <laughs> yeah this was good I was because waiting. this goes against it because no badass would have like a woman's handbag but he's like I need something to hold my ninja stars right. and I loved it because even Calvin goes what are you doing you'll look like an idiot I need something to hold these these are our only weapons these international objects Right, and this was this next scene. I saw this like somebody posted it somewhere. Maybe it was on YouTube. This is what made me want to do the movie. Yeah, this is good because <laughs> I don't even know who's who in these scenes. <laughs> they go outside once again. They just bumble into fucking Benitez again. Yeah, Benitez is somewhere yeah. lurking, <laughs> running around always. And there's a bunch of cop cars, and then <laughs> Boomer starts. And this, <laughs> this is brilliant. It looks stupid, but when you think about it, it's like. Ken, if this was the director didn't tell him to do this. This was a brilliant move by Ken yeah. Wall because he's a quarterback. Yeah, 
He fucking starts throwing, chucking, throwing starts like a football. He's like throwing. It's like full overhand. We're used to seeing so much more elegance behind our show. Right. You're holding it between your like thumb and forefinger yeah. and throwing it. And the it. flow doesn't always become f- come from over your shoulder. It's from the hip. It's from, uh, you know, your across shoulder. Anything to make it more, you know, unique. But no, he's a football. He's a jock hole. So he's going Full on football mode, and he's got to calibrate too. <laughs> so his first throw goes into the car door, and he's right. like, "Fuck!" But he knows he's a master of mechanics, so he knows where to step, where to rotate his shoulder. Right. And his second throw right into a fucking sixty <laughs> mile an hour driving by car, <laughs> shooting bullets at him, hits the guy right in the fork, fork and head. Fork and head. Uh, while we're on this topic, I also want to point out we, we skipped over it. When they were in the uh, parking garage, so uh, Boomer's in the back seat with the gun. And he's like, oh, I'm going to try to shoot him. And he starts shooting like everywhere. I like that they're <laughs> keeping that. Like, he still sucks. It, he like, still sucks. He's like, I told you I don't fucking know anything about guns. Right. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. So he's taking out dudes. With, now he's finally got his rhythm. He's, like, taking them out with the fucking throwing stars. Meanwhile, as we're watching him take out people, Benitez is walking around beautiful, beautiful suit. I don't know if he has the fit, sleeveless gloves anymore, but he's just shooting people with this giant rifle, just shooting them. <laughs> It's like, well, I don't know if these are real cops or the Foley's. He's just He doesn't shooting. care anymore. Exactly. He's just shooting anybody. And so finally we're building up to the moment where he finds. He's uh, got like a fucking Terminator plasma rifle. Yes. And he finally sees Boomer. And he just fucking shoots at him. Hits Kelvin. And like Boomer is like behind Kelvin or something. Because they both get knocked through a, yeah. like a, 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 a glass door. And once again. You think this is the fifth time he's thought he's killed Boomer. He's like, he's dead. There's no way they could survive that. So he shot him from pretty far away. He's walking in that direction. Varney rolls up in in his own truck, and he's just like, hey, what's going on with the uh, Boomer situation? He's dead right over there, (laughs) sir. Look at him. Face down in the mud. Okay, cool. Take off. I got this one. While they're saying that, we see Boomer open his eye. He's playing dead. That's and right. they also mention, he's like, uh, Robert's like, all right, well, Lord's over at, at my place. Okay. So, Varney has to get his last little, you know, spit in here. He's got to piss on the grave of his enemy. Yeah, and he's also got to he got to show up Benitez. Because he pulls out a little bomb, and he's just like. it up with his Excalibrate. 30 seconds, with his perfect time. you know. And he's just like. Looks like you're finally going to earn that nickname, asshole. And Boom. Your nickname. And then gotta spell it out. throws it down, gets in his car, laughs as he drives off. Won't even stick around to see. No, 30 seconds. That's a lot of time. That's too much time to leave on the clock for a quarterback with timeouts. Boomer grabs it, holds it like a football. That's all he knows. That's all he knows. Throws a Hail Mary pass. You see it through his eyes. He sees the cheering crowd all around him. He looks ahead. The truck has the number 88. Cobras, Cobras, Throws the pass, and while it's flying there, he looks up and sees Lieutenant Crow just giving him a fist pump, (laughs) and he's like, that's going to land right in the eagle's nest. Right into the back of fucking uh, Varney's truck, and we get one last... Okay, Boomer! Boom, blows up. Varney's dead. All right, so Robert with his ambulance has showed up to that burial All right, remember, site. we mentioned the wall. That's the painting, obviously. Not the, the album. The burial plot is the front lawn of Robert's place. He's got a little hidey hole with sod over it. They're taking it out. Oh. They're going to hide the painting inside this burial plot. Well, you're an idiot. You can't, like, just unbury this later and yeah, how, sell yeah, it. Yeah, how are you going to move this? You're not fucking uh, Eric Quaylen. Only he could move. Only something. he could. You, I thought you wanted to do his voice. <laughs> he's, <Yeah>. like, he's like, <laughs> dumb bitch. I thought I figured you would figure it out. This it's just a chess piece. You ever played chess? I hear you fuck somebody who played chess. <laughs> it's expendable. I don't give a fuck about this painting. All I care about is that it's covered by your father's insurance company. And here's the thing: if he refuses to pay out, it's a billion dollar policy. He's going to go bankrupt. Well, no. The whole plan is your well, father can't 
Exactly. Can't. It's blackmail. Well, that's yeah. He's like, but he's like, I don't. He's not. But basically, what he's saying is he's not interested even in the money. Yeah. He's like, but you're. you're he's gonna have no choice but to make me be chairman of the board of his. Sorry, guys. We're, we're at the two hour marks. So we're doing a good job of explaining this. But right. he's leading her along for her right. to go. No, it won't work that way. What is? It? He's not gonna be able to afford to pay that out. Oh, he he isn't gonna be able to afford to pay that out. I guess I'll just have to make me chairman. Oh, wow, weird situation. So that was this whole plan along. It had nothing to do with money. It was like, I want to look down on him. I want to be climbing up that Beverly Hills ladder. I want to be at the top rung. So meanwhile, we're thinking Kelvin's dead. So Boomer just throws him over his shoulder, he's carrying him out, and then Benitez rolls up, and he whips out his little, like, little, those little collapsible batons. This is, oh, I hated this fucking scene. He, he's like, you lame son of a bitch. And doesn't he hit him down with it or something? No, he just he just flicks it out. He's oh, threatening okay. him with it. They never even they never. This is the thing. They never even get like no. any th- punches this, thrown. This is me. They're literally like twenty feet away from each other. Right. So and he's like, course. and Boomer's like, you see that last play I made? I hit the ball. And that just and then Boomer just nonchalantly he puts fucking Kelvin down, picks up a rock. And just chucks it at Benitez's head. I hate people who hate football. That's it, people. That was Brands comes in. And then they tease us because we see Benitez come to and then he collapses again and dies. Awful. Horrible. All right. We'll round this thing out. Kelvin, he's waking up now. Of course, he reveals he had a bulletproof vest. Of course he did. Robert, he's taken Laura inside to his place because we know they were just on their front lawn. Right. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to sweeten this deal. He's like, I, you know too much. I'm going to have to kill you unless you marry me because spouses can't be uh, forced to testify against each other. That's right. And she's like, why the fuck would I want to do that? He's like, well, there's the other option. Is to kill you. Goes over to his crossbow that he has. Well, like, she dares to ask him, yeah, you kill me. How exactly would you do that? This is my old crossbow I got from medieval times. Because he, he had a whole, he's a big time like a pop culture guy. So he's got like the fucking attache case from Kinjite. He's, oh, he's got it all. He's got the dildo. like, And he's got a crossbow from a movie that has a crossbow. I can't think of one right now. I, yeah, I don't know one either. Bust it out. You're going to take an arrow to the heart like you've done to me. And at this point, I'm like, oh, Masterson? I think you're, I kind of sympathize with you. These people have been looking down on you. You're a self-made man. We've seen no evidence besides the heist yeah. that you're a criminal at all. Yeah. And they're just constantly shitting on you. You, I've seen no evidence that Laura is a good enough girl for you. She's been living off her daddy your old fucking life. I have seen no evidence that Laura is her own woman who stands on her own. All she has done is shown up to her dad's gala events, dressed in a dress, looking good, Attracting the football star, the L.A. Cobra football star. So how, why? Why is he doing this to himself? He's self-sabotaging. He's, he could do better. He Robert, could do way better. He could have done better. He could do way better. But before he can do that mental gymnastics, all we hear is, Hey, you guys! Boomer's driving the fucking tank now. It goes right through the front Would of his house. Would you say here comes the boom? No, I wouldn't say that at all. Oh, okay. And then he... He jumps out, dodges a, a a bolt from Robert, and he's like, "Time to renegotiate that contract." Yeah, the, yeah. I just these, love these are, these are awful lines. That bolt delivered from that crossbow looked like a Nerf gun. It was so <laughs> slow. It's well, so it was sad because it was from a movie, a movie that had yeah. a crossbow that we can't think of right now. I loved it. It was so sad. Well, it's kind of. It makes sense because the way they're portraying Masterson, he's just a limp dick. He is a limp so dick. Like, yeah. Rrr, 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 rrr. Right. And then, but this is he what was, I like oh, too. That's why he's after her, because she know he knows she's living off her dad, and he wants to become her new daddy. He's gonna supply her all the money and the way of living. Okay, I like this too because fucking Bastardson's kicking Boomer's ass like an asthmatic fucking elderly guy is beating up the hero. Yeah, and then. As out of desperation, there's an EpiPen on the fucking table. It wasn't an EpiPen. Yeah. 
It was the wine opener. Oh! This was my embarrassing moment is because when she first sits down and they're trying to talk about... But that makes so about, much more sense because they keep fucking talking about the I know, fucking inhaler. I know, they kept showing Going, that. So I was like, it's an EpiPen. But I was like, it's just a corkscrew? Why does it have a fucking giant dagger in it? It's it goes through the cork and then it de- like it uses pressure to shoot it out so okay. you don't get cork pieces in your wine. That's what. Well, it was. he gets stabbed with that and he dies. And then you hear him compress it into his lung. They they did a lot with that. So that's what, again why I thought it was the okay. inhaler. I, I thought it too. I thought it was an epipen. Yeah. So. All right, now we get the scene where we're loading up fucking Kelvin into an ambulance. Boomer's got the fucking blanket wrapped around his shoulders. We've seen this at the end of every action movie ever made, he's including Kel- Die Hard. Kelvin's like, I got to go. I've confessed everything. I got to go to prison. And he's like, no, no, you're a great ideas, man. In fact, you basically solved this whole case. You're free of all your crimes. Yeah, he's like, why don't you just lie? I happen to be fucking, I mean, soon to be fucking the lady of a great insurance salesman. I could probably work out a deal for you. I'm not, I still don't know whose side I'm on. Yeah, and he's just like, in fact, the insurance company gives out rewards. If you tell them the location of that painting, you're 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 fucking. You're saving them billions. Yeah, and he's just like, so, all right. So then we just hit the credits, and we're like, oh, it's over with. No, we get some, fuck Marvel, taking a Beverly Hills, the original fucking mid uh Mid credit scene. They had action too while yeah. it was going. The credits were rolling. Guess it wasn't wh- just like wait nine minutes. Guess what, people? Boomer's good to his word. He did fuck her, <laughs> but he also helped out some dirty, underprivileged kids play some football. That's he's, right. He's got he's uh he's got the fucking jersey tucked into the jeans. Oh, it was awful. And he's te- you know he's like, hey, see what a great guy I am. I'm teaching these underprivileged black kids how to play football. Then we see a Lambo drive up. A boy, Kelvin, gets out with his Cliff outfit. I think this is when he, this is when he becomes Cliff. Oh. I think Kelvin was a uh, uh, Cliff was a dirty cop named Kelvin. I think you might be right. He's like, oh. hey there, pal. He's got his Miami Vice outfit on. He's, he saw, uh, what's his name? Sonny Burton. Sonny Burnett? What was yeah, it? Yeah, Sonny Burnett. He saw him do it, and he's like, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to be the straight cop. It turns <laughs> into the dirty guy. Well, that's what Burnett, that's what Crockett. Oh yeah, did. you're, yeah. Going, you're right. <laughs> but he's gonna stay the dirty guy. Yeah, there we go. And there you have it. That's the end of the movie. So there you go. A little fucking movie, probably ninety nine percent you had never heard of. Yeah. But hey, it's worth checking out. It's a fun one. It's on YouTube. It's free. Go fuck it up. Okay. It's, okay. It's December now, people. You know we do December. We have fun. It's a fa- it's it's a family time of year. So we do sci-fi, we do fantasy, but we're going to do sci-fi next week, Griff. But I want hard sci-fi. Hard. I want intellectual, the heavy on the science, ex- much like The Martian. It's a little movie from the 70s called Logan's Run, everybody. Oh. We're going to do some hard science fiction in next week. I tried to get some, you know, you know, it's, we want to have fun during the holiday season. I tried to get some crossovers, challenges working. Everybody was scared. Everybody fears the acid pit, Griff. Well, you know, exactly. The acid pit is a fucking taunting And look, thing. we know we, we didn't, we we wimped out last time. We only took one of uh, Weapons Master Battler's pinkies. That's right. Now he has no pinkies. If you want to know what happened to the first pinky, that's a story he's going to have to tell that's you. That's right. But, it, it you know, it involves a lot of peck jelly, as I'll say. <laughs> But uh, yeah, people pussied out. So hey, I was gonna bring it to you, but yeah, I guess people don't believe in themselves, Griff. Well, they did the whole thing. UFC people train for months on end before their fight, so that's that's what they're yeah. looking for. They want more time to train. So yeah. hey, I guess you got that to look forward to. We got combatants training for you know yeah. the crossover. Yeah. At least that's their excuse this time. So we're not having that, but I think we're gonna have a very special tippy tap. Released on Christmas Eve. I don't remember what day. I think Christmas Eve is a Sunday. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And we'll see you next week for Logan's Run. Keep it warm. <laughs>